we've got a really good crowd here, and I'm sure Garrigan will have one as well. Great you are, and, you know, showing a lot of support right away when they were pulling in, heard the horns going and everything as the crowd showed up and looked across the way to that Edco sideline, and they got the little bit of bleacher space over there pretty much completely full, and then people just lined up down the fence line and everything should be in for a great game tonight. So as we get set to go here, we got about seven minutes before we're going to get started, according to our clock up on the scoreboard talk a little bit because most of you back at home probably not as familiar with Bishop Garrigan what they're about here in the sort of football season they have they come in undefeated on the season they are led offensively on a very ground heavy attack here coming into the season they're red they're led by Preston Coldhouse 150 rushes on the year for 852 yards and eight touchdowns. Quarterback Brad Capacious, the second leading rusher, he has 13 touchdowns at 651 yards. Eric Toole, Eric Toole has 457 rushing yards on the year and four touchdowns. Sam Vasky, 269 and four. And Colby Gray is 181 and two. They do pass every once in a while, though. Capacious is 50 of 91 for 794 yards, but just nine touchdowns against three interceptions. His main receiver is T.J. Schnoor, 398 receiving yards and seven receiving touchdowns. Big receiver out there on the edge. And the other receiver, Tristan Ferguson, with 13 catches, 225 yards and a touchdown. And, Roger, it's one of those things for Edco. You kind of expect what they're going to do, but at the same time, they do have some nice compliments for things for what they're going to be doing on offense. Yeah, that's true. I, I think most of the time that uh, Garrigan will line up in the in the eye, and they're going to run basically dive, trap, uh, lead. They're going to run a lot of option, um, which is why their quarterback has so many so many yards rushing, um, and is pretty even with his passing and rushing. And then as soon as you step up, take that away, then they're going to look to throw the ball deep. So um, Ed Cole will have to uh, have to make sure and. Uh, they locked in on the wide outs, and the, the, mid, the eight guys in the middle are going to have to take care of the run game. Now for Edco, offensively, of course, led by Preston Rochford. 400 yards in the opening round game on the ground, and now on the year, he's averaging nine yards a carry coming into tonight. 1,866 rushing yards for 26 touchdowns. Cameron Kirby next on the rushing for Edco, 346 rushing yards. Cal Hager has 255, and Keegan Hansel with 117. Quarterback Ethan Stryker, 59 of 110 on the year for 964 yards. He has 16 passing touchdowns and three interceptions. Parker Rochford, the uh, lead receiver yardage-wise for Edco, he has 19 catches for 404 yards and eight touchdowns. Preston Rochford has 340 receiving yards and six touchdowns. And Spencer Stainer with 13 receptions, 233 yards, and two touchdowns. So definitely one of those games that appears to be shaping up that it's going to be whose defense can stop the run first. Yeah, you know, uh, Rochford, you know, averaging 9.1 yards a carry. You know, he's averaging almost a first down every time he touches the ball. You know, overall, with adding in his passing, receiving yards, he's averaging nine and a half yards every time he touches the ball. Um and you know, I'm sure that that Jerrigan will uh, will have a spy on on number two out there tonight. Um, it's going to be an interesting matchup because uh, uh, the Golden Bears run a little bit different defense, and I think Edco has seen a lot of forefront with only two guys with their hands in the dirt. Everybody else is upright. They're trying to play in space, so it'll be a, a situation of uh, can the can the linemen from Edco get into their backers to where we can where Petco can create creases and, and advance the ball down the field. And uh, talking about that defensively for Bishop Garrigan, I mean, they have a lot of guys that are all kind of in the same area tackles-wise coming into the year. They have Cade Winkle at 53 tackles, Alex Mammon with 52 and a half, so he's only a half a tackle behind. Aiden Koob has 41 and a half, and uh, Eric Toole, one of the rushers, with 35 tackles on the year. Uh, a key lineman, it seems to stop that you need to stop for Bishop Garrigan would be Aiden Koob. He has 10 tackles for loss on the year. All 10 of them were sacked. Yeah, you know, they're going to get a lot of pressure from him. Um, it'll be interesting to see Maiman uh, broke either his hand or his wrist. I'm not sure he's got a big cast on 
last Friday night, so it'll be interesting to see how his tackling goes if he's able to wrap up as, as well as he has in the past. So as we get ready to go here, the uh, starting lineup getting red for the teams, and we're just about ready to uh, get ready for the national anthem. So we'll take a break and come back for the uh, opening kickoff of this Class A quarterfinal matchup. You're listening to Edco Postseason Football from KMPA Sports. And welcome back into Algona, where Bishop Garrigan and Edco just about ready to get started with this Class A quarterfinal matchup. And while we have the moment, we want to take a time to uh, thank all of our sports boosters for bringing you playoff football here on KMCH and KMCH.com, especially our Edco sponsors, CNL Drainage Community Insurance. Community Savings Bank, Del Clay Farm Equipment, Deers Realty, Edgy Meg, Edgewood Auto and Tire, Edgewood Saw and Supply, TNT Power Sports, and Garnavilla Auto and Tire, the Edgewood Convalescent Home, Edgewood Feed Mill, Edgewood Locker and Event Center, Edgewood Pump Service, Fenton Repair, Hair Works, Family Hair Works, Everett Auto Parts, and Mama Jen Nail, and Ray's Excavating. And as the uh, captains head out for the uh, coin toss here, Edco deferred to the second half, so Bishop Garrigan will start with the ball here to begin this game, and it's pretty much time ready to go as we get set. Edco will be kicking off to start, so we'll get to see right away this offense for Bishop Garrigan that's pretty run heavy. Yeah, I would anticipate they'll come out and try and, and, try and establish um, Kohas right away out, out of the gun, and uh, and we'll see what goes from there. So, as we are ready to go, a lot of black and gold here tonight as Bishop Garrigan, black helmets, black jerseys with the gold numbers and black pants. Edco counters with black helmets, white jerseys with black numbers and black pants. So, definitely a black and gold matchup here tonight between the Vikings and the uh, Golden Bears. As we get set and ready to go for kickoff, back deep to return for Bishop Garrigan, number 23, John Meist, as well as number 24, Sam Baskey. 
as uh, doing the uh, kickoff here for Ed Till. Number 22, Spencer Stainer, set to kick it away. And we are underway in this quarterfinal matchup. A kick that squids up the middle, taken by number 20 for Bishop Garrigan, and he's met right away and brought down just across the 30-yard line. Number uh, 24, Bishop Garrigan, is Colby Graves. And uh, the uh, ball will start here at about the uh, 32-yard line, first and 10 for Bishop Garrigan. So two teams that are going to be huddling it up, as we mentioned before, looking to run the ball pretty heavily on both counts as Bishop Garrigan comes out. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Is Capacious under center. He's going to hand it off right up the middle. Met and nowhere to go. Right back to the line of scrimmage for the uh, carry for Bishop Garrigan. That is uh, Cole House in the backfield. Doesn't get anything. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, the uh, the Golden Bears went without a tailback that time. Just a single back set. So, let's see here. So, it's number two in the backfield. That's uh, Eric Toole in the backfield. Same formation, but a pass play here. Base just drops back. Has a crosser across the middle. Of the spot and gets to about the up across it. It'll be Tristan Ferguson on the catch. Picks up about eight on the play. It's going to bring up third down and two for the Golden Bears. Yeah, just a little crossing route. Drug, drug it across the middle of the field and... Uh, Got, got in between the hole and the linebackers there. Two wide receivers out to the right, tight end in left eye formation, and it's going to be an option play pitch to the outside, and the running back has room across midfield and brought down at the 48-yard line. Getting the first down is number 25, Preston Colehouse, off the great option play there, and uh, pitching it pretty much at the last second was Brad Capacious. He was getting hit. Pitched it out to Colehouse, and he's able to pick up the first down for Bishop Garrigan. Now, right away, on the third down situation, they went right to the option there and uh, um, were able to complete the first down. I formation again, two wide receivers to the uh, right. Capacious under center, and he's going to give the handoff, and he's going to be met right at the line of scrimmage again. Pickup of maybe about a foot on the play is all. It's going to be second and 10 still after the rush. Great push up front by the Echo defense here on these plays that are trying to go right up the middle early for the Golden Bears. Second down, 10 yards to go. Four wide receivers set here for Bishop Garrigan this time. Capacious under center. It's going to be a quick dive right up the middle, and he's caught right away and brought down after a pickup of about two on the play. That Tool on the carry, tackle made by number, I guess I didn't see which one that was. Yeah, I have my head down. I'm going to guess it was Himes, 24. So Himes with the tackle there, and it's going to bring up now a third down and eight from the 45-yard line for Bishop Garrigan. So another third down upcoming, able to convert the first one. Longer one to go here as they come back out in that I formation. Two wide receivers to the right, tight end in on the left. Capacious is going to drop back the pass. He's looking for his big tight end across the middle, and it's caught and brought down for the first down. Their big wide receiver, number 80, T.J. Schnur, 6'4", 230 out there as a tight end. He's able to get across the 30-yard line to about the 28-yard line. First down, Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, they just used the size there to get, get the ball over the top. I formation again. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle. He has a hole, tries to hurdle over a guy, but then gets brought down immediately. He gets across the 25-yard uh, line to the uh, 24. They'll pick up about four on the play for Cole House on the carry. Second down and six here for Bishop Garrigan. Echo doing a good job of getting a push to begin with here for those run plays right up the middle as Garrigan comes out with four wide again. It is Tool in the backfield behind Capacious under center. And he's going to turn and give the uh, zone read and then keep it himself straight forward. Paul is the uh, uh, fake handoff for that read option. Able to pick up a couple to about the uh, 21-yard line. Going to bring up another third down for Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, the, 
Um, Stacy does a great job of riding, riding his fullback, so you never know for sure whether he's going to hand it off or whether he's going to pull it back out. And uh, Ed Coe's going to have to account for both people at that mess point. He definitely has a good understanding of how this uh, this option offense works. They come back on that high formation, two wide receivers to the right. Capacious under center. He's going to run the uh, uh, double read option, basically. And fumble picked up by Ed Coe. It's going to be ruled Ed Coe ball off the fumble. So a uh, double read option, basically, what they did there between the fullback and then the halfback. Carries it up the middle. He had the first down, but he got it stripped. And Ed Coe is going to take over now after the turnover at the 14-yard line. Yeah, great job by Ed Coe there, closing on the ball and stripping it out. So Ed Coe will start first and 10, ball on the uh, 14, as out comes quarterback Ethan Stryker calling the play in the huddle. And Ed Coe is going to come out with their own eye formation, a wide receiver to the left and one to the right. It is Rockford in the backfield. And it's going to be a handoff to Rockford off the right side, breaks to the outside across the 15-yard line, gets close to the 20. And Preston Rockford slow to get up after that first play, and he's going to need some help. He's unable to walk under his own power, getting held off to the sideline, and not a good sign for Ed Cho to have their leading rusher get hurt on the first offensive play. So for the uh, injury there, they're helping him off the side right away. It doesn't look like there's going to be any sort of a stoppage here. So... I don't know if that's a leg. Looked like he was dragging his right leg a little bit if he got his ankle turned or knee or what was going on there. So uh, Preston Rochford injured on his first carry there. He was able to pick up just a little over five yards out to about the 20-yard line, and that's where Edco will have it now for second and four. As a striker calling the play. And high formation for Ed Coe, four second down. Striker's going to turn and hand it off. Up the uh, middle, not much to do, though. Met right at the line of scrimmage. Keegan Hansel. So Keegan Hansel, the one that stepped in there into the backfield for Rochford after the injury. If you look over the sideline, uh, Preston is moving around under his own power. Looks like he's trying to loosen it up a little bit. So hope to see him back in the game. We'll see what happens here. As we now have a third down and three, they're called. And he picked up about a half a yard there. As Echo comes out, four wide, shotgun formation, four striker. Striker going to roll out to his left a little bit, turn, looks and throws, has a man out there. It's caught and at, the, at midfield, but nope, no, they're going to call him out of bounds. So Parker Rochford, the intended receiver on the play, caught it, but not able to stay in bounds with the foot. And that's going to bring up fourth down now for Edco. So Edco forced the punt after the uh, turnover. And back to return for Bishop Garrigan. Two men back there. As Edco comes out in their punt formation. See who we have back there for Garrigan as number 12. And that is Tristan Ferguson back to return the punt. Nice punt, but it's actually going to go and let drop and roll. It's at the 20 and then picked up. Met, but breaks the tackle. He's across the 20 to the 25 and driven out of bounds. That's number 23, John Mice, on the return. And Bishop Garrigan going to start now first and 10 at the 25-yard line. So a lot of action to begin with in this first two drives for both teams. Bishop Garrigan driving down, but has the fumble. Edco unable to get anything going. And coming out on defense, just a thing to mention, Preston Rockford is out there on defense, so good to see him back in the game. And uh, Bishop Garrigan will take over first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Yeah, that was a 60-yard punt there by Stryker with the roll. So four wide coming out for Bishop Garrigan. Capacious under center. He's going to turn and hand it off and met immediately. Again, just nowhere to go up the middle for Bishop Garrigan. That's going to be just brought right back to the line of scrimmage at the 25. It's going to be second and 10 after the carry by Tool doesn't get anywhere. Yeah, the interior seven of, of the Vikings did a really nice job on that play. I believe there was three three there with uh, helping out on that tackle. And the initial contact was made down low where the, the legs were gone. Just over six minutes to go in our first quarter. No score here. 
between Bishop Garrigan and Edco. Three wide receivers set to the right, and in shotgun formation here is Garrigan. Capacious is going to drop and roll out to his right, looks to throw, throws long, and overthrown his intended receiver. That's number 12, Tristan Ferguson. Good coverage on the play there for Edco by number 22, Spencer Stainer, and it's going to bring up third and 10 now for the Golden Bears. That is a big play here for the Edco defense because the Golden Bears have been able to do to make some really good good gains on third down. They've got to they've got to get them stopped in third down. They're third third and long here. Third and just a little over ten yards to go. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. I formation for Garrigan and dropping back to pass is Capacious rolling out to his right. Looks throws has a man. It's his big receiver. It's caught across the 30-yard uh, line, but not going to be enough for a first down. We have uh, Parker Rockford on the coverage. So pickup of about five on the play, but it's going to bring up fourth and five now for Bishop Garrigan. And uh, I would think with them being at the 30-yard line, they'll be lined up to punt here. And they uh, will be as uh, Marcus Plath is in punt formation. Back to return for Edco is number 14, Parker Rockford currently standing at about the 35-yard line. Punt is away. Rochford going to let it bounce at the 40, and it's going to go out of bounds at, see where they end up marking it at. Looks like it'll be around the 37-yard line. 30, oh, he's still walking. to the 39-yard line. So Edco will start their second drive, first and 10 from the 39-yard line. No score here with 5-11 left to go in our first quarter. So Edco... Hoping to get a little more going here on their second drive after their first drive. Went three and out. Going to be in a four wide receiver set here is the Vikings. As striker, shotgun formation. Two wide receivers to the right, two to the left. And it's going to be a flag on the play. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. Met in the backfield. He's going to lose about three yards. That is number 44 on the carry, Cameron Kirby. There, but there was a flag on the play, I believe. The illegal motion. He was leaning as the ball was going to be snapped. So the penalty for illegal motion is going to be declined by Bishop Garrigan, though, because of the loss. It's going to be now second and a 13 with the ball on the 36-yard line. So here we go. Echo getting ready to go for a second down. Comes out again in their four wide receiver set. To the right and to the left for receivers. It's Kirby to the left of Stryker. He's going to drop back to pass. Roll to his right a little bit. Throws out. Has a man. It's caught by Rockford. And he breaks tackle across the 45-50. And he gets to the 47-yard line. The pass completed to Parker Rockford. Good gain on the play. First down, Epto. Yeah, it was just a simple out route there by Parker. He slipped the first first uh, tackler there. And it makes you wonder if... You know, both of these teams want to run. Both teams are shown they can stop the run early. The difference might end up coming down to which team can pass. And we have a savage of play. A player coming out for Bishop Garrigan. Looks like he's got a little trouble with his helmet there. So, back in the play. Four wide receiver set again for Edco. To the right, to the left. Kirby to the right of a striker. It's going to be handed to Kirby. He's able to get to about the 45-yard line on the carry. It'll be a pickup of about two and bring up second and eight for the Vikings. Yeah, uh, Preston Rochford still isn't in on offense. They're using him on defense, but not on offense. Probably waiting to see if that leg loosens up. They don't want to take any shots. But not that you can't take a shot on defense, but it's not near as live right. likely as when, you, when you're handling the ball all the time. So Edco sticking with this four-wide set. It's Kirby to the right of Stryker as he drops back to pass. He's looking right, now looks left. He's flushed under pressure, and he's going to be brought down for a sack all the way back to about the 45-yard uh, line. It's going to be a loss of about nine on the play, and it's going to bring up now third down and long for the Vikings. Yeah, that was a good job of covering there by the Golden Bears is Striker had time. He just didn't have anybody, anybody to go to there. So, so third and long for Edco and an official's timeout here. 
uh, have some lights on <laughs> for a car in the back of the end zone. So that'll stop play, and we're good to go again. So third and long for Edco. Striker calling the play in the huddle. And Edco going to come out, sticking with that four-wide formation as the uh, Bishop Garrigan crowd in front of us gets to their feet for this important third down play, third and long. Striker going to drop back the pass. He's looking right. Looks, throws long. He has Rockford. It's caught to the 40. He's not going to have enough for the first down, but able to get to the 38-yard line. He's going to be about two yards short. It's going to bring up fourth and two from the uh, 38-yard line for Edco. And decision time now for head coach James Rockford. And it appears that Edco will be going for it here on fourth and two. Yeah, they're, they're well in the Golden Bear territory here. So Stryker breaks the huddle. That's still going to stick with that four-wide formation. Stryker is going to go under center on this one. And quarterback Keith right up the middle. He gets met right at the line, and he doesn't get it. I think he ended up picking up about a yard on the play, but needed two. So Bishop Garrigan with the big fourth down stop there, and that's going to bring up first and ten for Bishop Garrigan with three minutes left to go in our first quarter. So pretty fast-moving game here so far. Edco had a little bit of life going there and able to make it fourth and very manageable, but unable to pick it up on fourth down. And Bishop Garrigan going to take over at the uh, 38-yard line, first and 10, as they have eye formation, two wide receivers to the right. Capacious going to turn and hand it off to Cole House. Cole House is across the 40, gets close to the 43-yard line before he is brought down, and that's going to bring up a uh, second and six after the pickup of four by Cole House for Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, just a simple lead play there uh, by Garrigan and did a, did a nice job of getting a good gain on first down. High formation, two receivers to the left for Bishop Garrigan. Capacious under center. He's going to drop back to pass with a late handoff on the draw, and he's going to be met and dropped for a loss. Great pursuit there by number 74, Spencer Amling, to bring down number uh, 25 for Bishop Garrigan, uh, Preston Colehouse for the loss. Knocks him all the way back now to uh, third and nine, and we have an injured Viking on the play. So, and again, Preston Rochford, again. Preston Rochford coming in to play defense. Got hurt on that first offensive play for Edco in there on defense. And again, like it's a knee. Yep, again, needing to be helped off the field. So Preston Rochford gets helped off over to the sideline to, before we get ready for this third and nine play for Bishop Garrigan. So definitely something you don't want to see as Edco fans to see Preston Rochford now get helped to the sideline twice. We're hopeful that it's something that he's able to get taken care of and come back for. We'll see what happens. Third down, it's going to be capacious. Dropping back, it's going to be a throwback. Green. To number 25, and he's got all sorts of room. He's across midfield, brought to the 40 and shoved out of bounds. Great play design there by Bishop Garrigan to pick up the first down and more. It's going to officially be ruled out at the 39-yard line. So great play design there for the screen for Bishop Garrigan. And now they got first and 10 at the uh, 39-yard line. Two wide receivers to the right. High formation for Garrigan. It's going to be turn hand off to Cole House. He's up the middle. Got a great pull on it. to the 30-yard line. He's able to pick up about nine on the play on first down. So it'll be second down and a little over a yard here for Bishop Garrigan after the first down run play by Cole House. Second down and one. We have a minute and a half to go in our very fast-moving first quarter by two teams that have kept the clock rolling. It's going to be quarterback keeper around the outside and brought down from behind. Good tackle and pursuit by Cameron Kirby as on the carry is quarterback Brad Capacious for Bishop Gergen, but he does have enough to get a first down on the play. First and ten now for Bishop Garrigan. Ball will be placed at the uh, 37, or excuse me, the 32 yard line. Yeah, 
Clock running at a minute 20. I formation, two wide receivers to the right for Bishop Garrigan. Capacious going to turn and hand it off to Cole House. He gets met again at the line of scrimmage, but able to fight forward for a couple of yards. Going to go officially as, based on the spot, still working on it, but it looks like he's going to pick up about three on the play. Second down and seven upcoming for Bishop Garrigan. And Echo still doing a good job at getting that push initially up front outside of the one long run play that happened just a couple of plays ago and still tough yardage on the way for Bishop Garrigan that they've had to work for. Yeah, when well, they kept it on the ground, it was a really nice screen play that got them the, the first down there. High formation. Going to drop back to pass. Has a man. He's open. It's overthrown. Intended receiver on the play was number 12. That is Tristan Ferguson for Bishop Garrigan. Coverage on the play there by uh, Spencer Stainer, but a little bit overthrown there from quarterback Capacious is going to bring up a third down and a seven with the ball on the 24-yard line and 32 seconds left to go already in our first quarter. Yeah, the Golden Bears were going with an out and up there, and uh, the receiver just got turned around on the release of the ball. So Capacious goes under center, I formation, two wide receivers to the right, tight end to the left, and he's going to drop back to throw again. He's looking the way of that tight end, a high throw, brought down and caught right around the first down marker, but it doesn't look like they're going to give it to him. It's going to be fourth down and one after the catch by the uh, big receiver, TJ Schnur, and that's going to potentially bring us to the end of the first quarter, although Bishop Garrigan getting right up to the line, 10 seconds and counting. They are going to run a play, fourth and one. Turn handed off and met, but keeps his feet moving. It's all a matter of where the spot is. The clock's going to stop with two seconds on the clock. I'm not sure that he got it. It's all going to matter on where the spot is. Stryker says no. He's going over to get a play. Nope. Well, okay. Yep. They gave it to him. So first down, Bishop Garrigan. The clock will run then, and that will probably bring an end to this first quarter. But now the officials. Maybe. I would be surprised if Coach Rochford didn't ask for a measurement there. Yep, and that does appear what they're going to do. They're called for a first down, but now they're going to bring out for a measurement. So big measurement here. Either way, it was, again, another good push by that Edco defense to make it close to begin with, and we'll see what this measurement brings up for Bishop Garrigan on that fourth and two play. Stretches it out, and... He doesn't have it. Short. So it's a good thing they came out to do the measurement as it'll now be first and 10 at So what was originally called the first down ends up being brought out for the measurement and he ends up being just short of the first down. So Edco will take over after the turnovers on down first and 10 with the ball at the 17 yard line. So, Ed Hill is going to come out in their traditional high formation here. One right receiver to the left, one to the right. It's Keegan Hansel in the backfield. It's going to be turn and option play themselves, and Stryker going to keep it and turn up field. He gets across the 20-yard line to about the 21-22, and that is how our first quarter will come to an end. So, very fast. Moving first quarter, no score after one in this Class A quarterfinal matchup. You're listening to Edco Playoff Football from KMCH Sports.
along with our in-studio producer, Ashley. Roger Wright and Trevor Hunt with you here on the second down play. is going to be a swing pass out to the outside to uh, Parker Rochford. He's able to pick up the first down and get out to the uh, 30-yard line as the first play for the uh, second half for Edco goes for a first down. And Edco looking to get something going here on their first drive of the second quarter. Yeah, it was, it's evident to see uh, Bishop Garrigan's strategy on the option that was run the play before. They they want Stryker to run the ball and not to pitch it. They probably prepared for Rochford, but it would be the same thing with Hansel in the backfield as well. Hard count for Edco, and they are able to get one of the linemen for Bishop Garrigan to jump. So that will now make a first and ten, be a first and five. And Edco will now have the ball at the just shy of the 35-yard line here. So no score after a first quarter. That moved very quick. Two teams that keep the ball usually on the ground, keep the clock moving. There has been probably few, a few more passes tonight than what was originally planned for based off of some other outside circumstances with the injury for Rockford. As a handoff here is going to go to a handful, fights forward, gets about a half a yard on the play, and that's going to make it now second down and a four with the ball just across the 35-yard line for Edco. Ethan Stryker gets the uh, play call from head coach James Rochford, brings it back to the huddle. One wide receiver to the right, as well as a tight end to the right. One wide receiver to the left, I formation for Stryker. As he's going to drop back to pass, he's looking right, going to go a very wobbly pass. Two receiver, the receiver and the uh, defender fighting for it. A flag is thrown. The intended receiver on the play, I believe, was Stainer. And we'll see. I believe it's going to be pass interference. And it'll be a pass interference on Bishop Garrigan. So that'll bring it to another first down for Edco. So taking a shot. And, you know, kind of got a little lucky there. Not the prettiest of passes that was thrown there by Stryker. Kind of an end-over-end look. Didn't come out of his hand just like he would want it to. But... You no, know, sometimes you take that shot, you get the pass interference if it's not caught, and that's what Echo got here to get the ball now at the 49-yard line as they cross midfield. And now we have a timeout taken by Echo. So with that, we'll take one, two. With 11:15 left to go in our first half, no score. You're listening to Echo Bishop Garrigan football from KMCH Sports. First and 10 from the 49, and it's going to be uh, Rockford in that quarterback there. They're going to run the option with him, and he's off across the 45, gets down to about the 42-yard line. Parker Rockford checks in that quarterback there, runs the option, and gets a, a great gain on first and 10 for Edco, as Edco is now down to the 42-yard line to bring up a uh, second down and about three after the first down run by Parker Rochford. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that's a uh, that's a formation we may see more of is putting Parker in the backfield there at quarterback and, and stretching because if they're going to play the pitch back, Parker is a is a big threat at keeping the ball on the option. Stryker back in at quarterback, under center. Hard count for Ed Coe. He's going to turn and hand it off to the fullback right up the middle. He gets close to the 40-yard line. He's going to be just short of a first down, but it's going to bring up a third and one. It was uh, Kirby, the ball carrier there, first man through out of the I formation. 
and that's going to bring up a third and one with the ball sitting at the 40-yard line. Yeah, Edco's going to try and run the ball somewhat straight ahead just to keep them honest, and then I'm assuming trying to attack them on the edges a little bit here. So I formation, regular formation, one right receiver and tight end to the right, wide receiver to the left, striker under center, back in the eye behind him. He's going to turn and pitch it out to the outside. Gets great pursuit and able to be brought down in the backfield. Great push through the line and straighten out the play there for Bishop Ergen. going to end up being a loss of about two on the play. And it's going to be now fourth down and three, or four, it looks like, for Edco as the ball sits at the uh, 43 yard line. And Edco is in punt formation here. There's nobody back to return for Garrigan. And now they'll send back Capacious. The snap rolls back to Stryker, but able to get the punt away. It's going to hit at the 10 yard line, make its way towards the sideline. Great punt. Great punt. It's going to roll out of bounds at, looks like they're going to spot it between the four and five yard line. So a great punt there by Stryker and a great job to keep his composure after the snap rolled back to him. And uh, Garrigan going to start now first and 10 with the ball just behind the five yard line. So 90, a little over 95 yards to go for Bishop Garrigan pinned back deep in their own territory. So Garrigan comes out for their first drive of the uh, second half. They have two wide receivers to the right, tight end to the left, and it's going to be a handoff up the uh, middle and gets just about to the Alliance scrimmage, gets about a yard on the play. That is going to be carry on the play by Preston Colehouse, who's able to pick up one officially and bring up second and nine for Bishop Garrigan. Head coach just needs to... to Rely on their defense here and hopefully flip the field on opposite. Flip the field here so that uh, they can get a short field. Garrigan is going to have the handoff go right up the middle again. This time it's to the fullback. And Echo saying that the ball came loose, but the officials are going to call it down before it did. It looks like on the uh, carry is Eric Toole, the fullback. He is able to pick up about three yards and make it now third and six for Bishop Garrigan. It's a big third down for both teams here. Garrigan doesn't want to punt from the from the where they're at field position at now, and Ed Coach certainly wants them to hold them here. So Bishop Garrigan comes out, still the same formation. They got two wide receivers to the right, flat back in the left, and it's going to be a pass for Capacious. He's looking as the crosser, and it's caught, brought down right away. Big number eighty, uh, T.J. Schnorr on the reception. He's going to be just short of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth and one. Well, well they're going to measure that? Yep, it appears they're going to measure it. I I mean, just based off of what we can see from here, it looks like he's going to be about a half a yard short, but at the same yeah, time. Yeah, the same, same thing as the, the last time. They're on the other side of the crown, so it's right. kind of hard to see. Yep, so we'll see what we have here for the measurement. The officials for tonight going to bring it out stretch it and he is going to be short so fourth down and less than a yard to go here as the ball is sitting on about the 14 yard line so fourth and inches for Bishop Garrigan and now it's one of those situations do you trust you can get enough push to pick up those couple inches or do you just punt it away for right now and we'll see what Bishop Garrigan decides to do here on offense They are going to go for it. So, two wide receivers to the left. Odd count situation here for sure. High formation for Bishop Garrigan. It's going to be turn, handoff right up the middle. He's got the first down, able to get a few more. He's going to officially come up as a pickup of about five on the play. Just keeping his legs moving there was Eric Cole on the carry. And it's going to be first and ten for Bishop Garrigan as the ball will be spotted just outside the 20-yard line. Pickup of about five or six on the play. Eight minutes to go here in our first half. Capacious under center. He's going to turn and give it to Cole House, who's met in the backfield and dropped. Doesn't get anything on the carry. As they go with a good push up front. 
Looks like they're going to give him about a half a yard with his forward progress to the 20-yard line, where it'll be a second and nine for Bishop Garrigan. Again, we want to thank some of our sponsors here at Joe Style for postseason sports here on KMCH, CNL Drainage, Community Insurance, Community Savings Bank, Dale Clay Farm Equipment, Sears Realty, Edgy Megs, and Edgewood Auto and Tire, Edgewood Saw and Supply, TNT Power Sports, and Garner Villa Auto and Tire. Escapatius drops back to pass. He's flushed and brings it, tucks it, and is out to the 25, to the 30, and brought down at the uh, 33-yard line, and he's going to pick up the first down after being rushed. So great recognition there by quarterback Brad Capacious to tuck it and run after didn't find anybody open and was under pressure. And it's going to be first and 10 again for Bishop Garrigan at the 33. Four wide receiver set. Tool is in the backfield with Capacious, who's going to turn and do that read option with him right up the middle. Fumble picked up and... Unable to get it in his head, so I believe it's still loose, but I think Bishop Garrigan was the first one to drop on it. No. Ed Coe no. no. up with it. All right, the second turnover of the game, and Ed Coe again picks up the uh, fumble, and they're going to start with great field position at the 30. So quarterback Capacious keeps it on the read option. He had me fooled. I was watching. I was watching the fullback. Yeah, I was, I was watching. Then all of a sudden, I noticed he was dancing out there, and nobody was tackling him. So Capacious gets a strip. Echo had a chance to pick it up. It looked like it was still loose, and then it appeared that Garrigan jumped on it, but ruled as Echo's ball, and Echo going to come back out in that four-wide formation with Stryker at quarterback. And he's going to bring a man in motion. It's going to be a toss play to the outside. Stringing it out beautifully is number 80. He's able to break the tackle. Is uh, he can handle to the Whoa, that's side. Be 15. And, yep, that's going to be... A late hit out of bounds. So Kirby. No, that was uh, that was Hansel. Oh, excuse me, Hansel with the uh, carry around the outside. So he lines up in the slot, comes in motion. They toss it out to him and uh, brings it out. Great job to string it out. That the uh, big wide receiver also playing at defensive end, T.J. Schnur, who strings it out, brings it to the sideline. But the late hit out of bounds is going to bring a uh, first and ten for Edco as the ball will now be taken down and spotted at the 16-yard uh, line. So first and 10, ball at the 16 for Edco. As the Garrigan fans get up and uh, get loud here on this drive, I formation for Edco. It's going to be a swing pass out to Rochford. He uh, bobbles it a little bit, able to get to the outside, but only pick up about a yard or two. So uh, Parker Rochford on the reception after the uh, quick little throw out by a striker. He's able to get about two on the play, and it's going to be second down and a long eight here for Edco with six minutes and 22 seconds left to go in our first half. This is a this is a huge drive for Edco. I mean, they got a short field. Uh, they they need to they need to get this in the end zone. And this is the type of game Bishop Garrigan is used to last week, the uh, close win over Wapsie Valley, whereas Edco's was a little bit more. Not in doubt as the handoff is going to go to uh, Kirby, able to break a few tackles and get across the 10-yard line to the 9-yard line. So good hard running there by Cameron Kirby, the sophomore running hard here for Edco as he gets out to just past the 10-yard line. It's going to be third and four for Edco. That was a good, that was the counter off the pitch play that they just ran the inside trap there and, and Kirby was able to, to get a nice gain there. One of those things where you always say you run one play to complement it later, and that was one of those cases for Echo as they come back in an eye formation here. Striker under center. Hard count. He's going to turn and hand it off to Ansel broke the tackle. He breaks, breaks the tackle, but still just gets across the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's able to pick up about one or two on the play. It's going to bring up fourth down for Echo. So, again, just like you were saying, big drive here for Edco. They got great field position. They're inside the 10-yard line, and it's going to be fourth and three. So, a very big play here for both teams. As the Garrigan fans start to make it loud, as is going to come out four wide receivers. He has a Kirby to the left of Stryker now. And coming in motion is Hansel. It's going to be a reverse out to Stryker, and he's going to look in the throw, uh, get the block from 
from a striker oh. for a break double tackle. He's still fighting. He's right around that first down marker. The uh, chain gang had to drop the sticks as the action went over that way to the right. So we'll see where they end up actually spotting it at. He's going to be close based off of where that ball is. And <laughs> they're going to measure it. It's right there. <laughs> they're going to measure it from about two, two or three feet away here. So Edco comes out, runs a reverse. It looked like uh, Parker Rochford was looking to throw. It wasn't there. It was the old Philly special, but uh, they peeled with uh, they peeled with Stryker when he left, and Rochford decided to keep it. And they're right there. What? What are we? Yep, it's going to be a stop. He's going to be. Based off of what I can see from here, he's going to be just an inch short is all. Right. And, it's going to be, and it's going to be first and ten, big stop there for Bishop Garrigan. So, Edco tries for the little bit of a reverse pass, but a great job by Parker Rochford to tuck it and run and get what he could. Got to that first down marker, but counted just short. And it's going to be first and ten again for Bishop Garrigan with the ball sitting at about the uh, six-yard line. High formation for Garrigan. It's going to be a quarterback run, keep right up the middle just to get a little bit of breathing room for the uh, Golden Bears. Is the uh, quarterback capacious right up the middle? He is able to pick up about three on the play, though, and it's going to be second and a seven with the ball sitting at the uh, nine yard line. Second down, seven to go with. Just a little over four minutes to go in our first half. No score here in a very fast-moving game between Edco and Bishop Garrigan. Three wide receivers now to the right. As Capacious going to turn, hand it off right away, and he's got a man tool. He's across the 20 to the 25 to the 30, dragging a defender with him. and going to be taken out of bounds at the uh, 30 three-yard line is where they're going to spot it. So a big pickup there by Tool out of the uh, three-wide formation. They have him, They, you know, the I formation where they don't have the running back all the way in the backfield, just have the fullback there. Very quick hit, hitting handoff. And Tool able to get a good pickup on the play, first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Yeah, by formation, they're, they're dragging one of Edco's linebackers out of the, out of the middle of the field. They're doing the same thing here, although this time Capacious is going to be in the shotgun. He has tool behind him in a three-point stand. Flags fly right away, so it must be an illegal formation. He's going to look and throw it long. It's going to be overthrown for the intended receiver. That's number 23, Justin Mason, with number uh, 24 for Echo Logan Hines on coverage. And the penalty will go against Bishop Garrigan here to back him up after that first down play. Yeah, I wonder if they had too many guys on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it was one of those where uh, Capacious was sitting there waiting for a couple of guys to get set, and then as soon as they did, snapped it, and two officials immediately threw out the flags on the play. So five-yard penalty makes it first and 15 now with the ball sitting at the 26-27 yard line. Three minutes, 43 seconds left to go. And... uh, Garrigan breaking their huddle here. A little bit slower coming out for getting this play ready to go. They come out in that three-wide set again. Capacious is under center. Tool in the backfield. It's going to be hand off the tool off the trap, and he's got room. He's across the 40 to the 45 and brought down at the 47. So a pickup of about 15 on the play for Tool out to the 47-yard line. is going to make it first and 10 with 3.38 left to go in our first half. Great play there by the uh, Golden Bears to uh, get back the yardage and more from that penalty. Yeah, right now they're spreading the Vikings out and then just coming with an inside trap. High formation, two wide receivers to the right. It's going to be a handoff and met in the field and dropped. Great job there defensively for Edco to get the uh, push and bring down the uh, running back Colehouse in the backfield going to end up going down as a loss of three back to the 44-yard line. And that line for Edco getting a great push again and able to hit the uh, running back in the backfield, loss of three on the play. Edco's done a, good, done a nice job on Cole House, but they're, they're having trouble with – they're giving something to get something and they're having trouble with Paul right now. So back 
Rolling out to the right is the quarterback. Cole out. He's under pressure. Still has his eyes downfield. Throws it late. It's going to be picked off. Picked off by Edco. That is number 30, Keegan Hansel, with the interception. He's going to have the interception at the 39-yard line. So Edco with another turnover here with 2.38 left to go in our first half. And Edco is going to have it first and 10 at the 39 after the interception by Keegan Hansel. Yeah, just a great play there by by Hansel. So we have three wide receivers to the right, tight end to the left, shotgun formation for Ethan Stryker. He has Kirby to his left. And a Stryker going to drop back to pass. He's under pressure, steps up, looks to run, not too much to go, able to get what he can, crosses the 40, and gets brought down to the 43-yard uh, line. Able to pick up three on the play, second and seven. So a great job by Ethan Stryker. They had a man coming unblocked on the blitz, able to step up and avoid him, and then dance around for a three-yard gain there. Yeah, Winkle, Winkle came on a stunt there and just came free because Kirby was on, he came from Stryker's right, and Kirby was on his left, so the blocking back wasn't there to, to help out. So three wide receivers to the left now, tight end to the right. Kirby to the right of Stryker in shotgun formation. As he looks, drops and throws, he has uh, Rochford out across the 45, dance around to the 50, and yep. is going to be marked out of bounds right at the 50, which is also where they need to go for a first down. We'll see. They're going to be just short here, assuming that the, line, <laughs> that the lines are straight. They are going to bring the chains all the way over and measure, though. So, you know, it's one of those. According to where the chains are set there, they need to get to the 50-yard line. And, you know, if you're if you're assuming that the, lanes, that the lines Lines are painted straight, straight yeah. this will be a third down and inches here for Edco. Of course, but, in this case, you have to have two lines straight, the one they're setting the marker on and the skill lines, you know. So if either one of them wavers a couple inches, then... Right. Yep. So we'll see what officially ends up coming out of the measurement here. A lot of measurements in this game so far as it shows just how hard these two teams are working. And he is going to be just a couple of chain links short here for third down and pretty much an inch, which I feel like we've been going over kind of frequently here with a minute 52 left to go in our first half. Still no score in this Class A quarterfinal between Edco and Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, it was a great move there by Rochford because the ball got tipped by number 80 there. Um, Sure, sure. Schnur, and uh, we still have to complete the pass and pick up about eight yards. So we'll see what Echo does here on third and inches. Uh, Parker Rochford did get out of bounds, so the clock won't run with a minute 52 left to go. And we'll see what Echo does here on third and inches. So coming out, they're in their eye formation, one Wide receiver and tight end to the right. Wide receiver to the left. High formation, striker under center. He's going to keep it and run forward. He has the first down and a couple more. He's able to pick up about three or four on the play. And that will be first down for Edco as they cross midfield and get to the 47-yard line. So if you're Edco, you have a minute 45 and counting and a 47 yards to go to the end zone. It would be absolutely huge to get on the board here right before half, especially since Edco will be starting with the ball here in the second half. So three wide receivers to the right. Stryker in the shotgun formation. He has Kirby to his right. Stryker is going to drop back to pass. He's under pressure, and he's going to be brought down for a sack. Brought down back to the 45-yard line. It's going to end up being a loss of about eight on the play as the clock now rolls to a minute 10 and counting. And now, you know, it's just going to be one of those things where you see maybe if Echo gets the uh, ball in the hands of uh, maybe Parker Rochford, see if he's able to break something, anything like that, as the clock is now under a minute, as we're in uh, two wide receivers to the left, two to the right. Striker in. Shotgun and Rochford straight down the field. Throws it, has number 24. It's not going to be brought in. That is Logan Hines, the intended receiver. Had it, hit him in the hands, unable to haul it in, and then gets hit right away by the Bishop Garrigan defenders. It would have been just short of the first down had he uh, caught it, but instead we sit with a third and 
long here for Edco with the ball sitting at the 45-yard line and 45 seconds left to go in our first half. I'd be shocked if Edco didn't run it here just to keep the clock moving. Four wide receivers set. It is uh, Parker Rochford in, or no, excuse me, uh, Stryker was in shotgun formation, but now Edco is going to take a timeout, so we'll take a quick one with them. No score, 44 seconds left to go in our first half. You're listening to Edco Playoff Football from KMCH Sports. Hey, KMCH listeners. GMB is proud to support our area athletes and help bring the sport to you. The GMB Bank team reminds you whatever your financial goals, we're here to help you reach them. Stop by our Manchester location or visit us online at gmbbank.com. Member FDIC. Going above and beyond is a standard of care at Above and Beyond Home Health and Hospice Care. Their compassionate staff care deeply about the comfort of their patients. A nurse is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Above and Beyond Health Care, the more they care, the more beautiful life becomes. Proudly serving Jones, Jackson, Johnson, Lynn, Clayton, and Delaware counties. Along with Ashley, our in-studio producer, and the uh, AD of Edgewood Colesburg, Roger Wright. Trevor Hunt with you from Algona for this a Class A a quarterfinal matchup between Edco and Bishop Garrigan. It's going to be third and long for Edco here with 44 seconds left to go in our first half. No score in a uh, very close defensive battle here so far between these two teams. And Edco is going to come out five wide, and it's going to be Parker Rochford in at quarterback all by himself in shotgun formation. Quarterback draw. Most likely that's what I was thinking too. And rolling out to the right is Rockford. Gets around the outside. He's across midfield. Gets to close to the 45-yard line. Not going to be close to the first down marker, but a good pickup there by uh, Parker Rockford. He's going to be driven out right at the 45-yard line. It's going to be fourth and eight with 36 seconds left to go in our first half. Head coach got to make sure they're rock solid here on the punt team and get a good snap and uh, good protection here. So back to punt is a striker. It is going to be the patient quarterback, kind of going back to return, but they're not sending anybody back there. The punt is away, angling towards the right. It's going to hit at about the 15-yard line and roll forward to the 10-yard line. And that is where it's going to be blown dead with 26 seconds left to go in our first half. Bishop Garrigan going to start with the ball right on the 10-yard line. And, you know, 26 seconds left to go for a team that likes to run. You got to think they're just going to run it here. If they're able to break something, then that's what they're going to go for. But I don't anticipate Bishop Garrigan being too aggressive here. I would anticipate they'll go into that wide formation and run the trap, the fullback trap again, if I had to guess here. So I learned. high formation for Bishop Garrigan here, and they're just going to take a knee. So the uh, clock will run, still officially 20 seconds, but both teams going to be heading towards the sideline. And that's how our first half is going to come to a close. No score in this Class A, a quarterfinal matchup between Edco and Bishop Garrigan. We'll take a short break, get a look at our first half stats, and come back for more. You're listening to Edco Bishop Garrigan Playoff Football from KMCH Sports. At Tauke Motors, we believe in a gentler, simpler way of doing business. Check out our large selection of new and pre-owned vehicles, as well as great incentives at TaukeMotors.com. If you are looking for a new pre-owned vehicle or service on your current vehicle, come to Tauke Motors, Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram on 9th Street in Dyersville. The Edgewood Convalescent Home, modernized with that home away from home feeling. Lincolnwood Assisted Living has home-like accommodations and personal service and health care available when you need assistance. Edgewood Convalescent Home and Lincolnwood Assisted Living, the peace of mind you need for your family's special needs. At Dupaco Community Credit Union, we know debt happens. A debt checkup from Dupaco ensures it's not costing you more than it should. With historic low interest rates, now is the time to bring your loans to Dupaco. Contact us at 563-927-6187 or visit dupaco.com. Edgewood Pump Service is your state-certified submersible pump installer with over 44 years experience. Edgewood Pump Service is open 24 hours a day. Call Edgewood Pump Service anytime for reliable service. Go Vikings! 
The Manchester Press is your community newspaper. Check out the sports section for game stats and photos of area players and game highlights. The Manchester Press, serving the area for over 130 years. Fenton Repair is your dealer for the number one selling tractors in the world, Mahindra, backed by a seven-year, 3,000-hour powertrain warranty, or their new retriever utility vehicles. Good luck from Mahindra Tractors and UTVs in Fenton Repair, LLC, located five miles north of Strawberry Point on Highway 13. Hurry down to Rio Blanco Mexican Restaurant in Manchester today. Enjoy the best margarita around on their patio facing the Whitewater Park. Rio Blanco features daily specials and a kid's menu too. There's something for everyone at Rio Blanco Mexican Restaurant in Manchester. Rustic, vintage, handcrafted items, antiques, home decor and gifts, all this and more at Edgy Megs. Their Christmas open house is November 1st through the 4th. Check them out on Facebook at Edgy Megs. Edgy Megs is located on Laser Road on the south end of Edgewood. Megan would love to see you in her shop. Go Vikings! Newhouse Construction and Concrete is proud to support all our area athletes. Give Phil a call at 927-5178 for your commercial, ag, or residential projects. Or visit NewhouseConstruction.com. Newhouse Construction and Concrete turns design into reality. No one can win a game by themselves. At f and Bank, our team works together to achieve the ultimate goal, exceeding client expectations. f and Bank is a proud supporter of all local sports teams. f and Bank, the right choice in Manchester, Cedar Rapids, Anamosa, and Monticello. Member FDIC. Deers Realty in Colesburg, proud to support the Edco Vikings and wish them the best for continued success. For your realty needs, call Janet Deers with Deers Realty in Colesburg. Go Vikings! Just like you take pride in your vehicle, we take pride in the service work we provide. This is John from Georgian Auto in Manchester. Whether it's routine maintenance or major repairs, we'll take care of your car and get it back on the road. Georgian Auto in Manchester, where complete automotive service and repair is our complete focus. For all your general contracting needs, turn to the professionals at Lucky Building Service in Manchester. For commercial, remodeling, and building, and new home construction, call the experts. Lucky Building Service in Manchester. 563-927-5677. You may not wear glasses or contacts, but how do you know if you're seeing your best or if your eyes are healthy? Why not be proactive and get your eyes examined? Dr. Daniel E. Mersch and his professional staff at Manchester Family Vision can help. Manchester Family Vision Center on West Main, where clear vision begins with healthy eyes. As your American Family Insurance agent in Manchester, I'm looking out for what matters to you. Even when nothing's wrong, this is Tad Mormon, agent. Call me at 563-927-3586 and let's talk about your insurance needs today. American Family Insurance, Tad Mormon, agent. 106 East Main Street, Manchester. Contact me, Chad Frazier, at BC Land Services in Earlville for all your maintenance projects such as tree removal and trimming, small dirt work projects, lawn seeding, and more. BC Land Services is fully insured and licensed. Contact me at 563-590-8074 or on Facebook. And best of luck to all area athletes and coaches. Del Clay Farm Equipment is your hometown equipment dealer in Edgewood. Del Clay Farm Equipment specializes in Agco, Bobcat, New Holland, and Kawasaki. For your work or pleasure, Del Clay Farm Equipment in Edgewood. Go Vikings! This is Sarah from It's So Me Boutique in downtown Dyersville, inviting you to stop in, look around, and let us assist you in finding the perfect outfit for any occasion. We offer fashion-forward trends for women, including plus sizes, baby clothes, shoes, and fun accessories to complete any look. It's So Me Boutique in the heart of downtown Dyersville. And check out our Facebook page. Deers Realty in Colesburg, proud to support the Edco Vikings and wish them the best for continued success. For your realty needs, call Janet Deers with Deers Realty in Colesburg. Go Vikings! Edgewood Feed Mill Construction is a general contractor and will assist you with the construction of your livestock facility start to finish. For more information on Edgewood Feed Mill Construction, contact Steve Harris at 563-920-7835. CNL Drainage can handle all of your farm tiling, backhoe, septic, and dozer work, and all types of track hoe excavating. CNL Drainage specializing in farm tiling using the latest technology laser setup with Trimble RTK satellite system. Hello, this is Fred Smock from Dunlap Motors in Independence. We are proud to support local school programs. So if you are looking for a new Chevy Buick or certified used car or truck, or just want to stop and say hi, stop in. That's Dunlap Motors in downtown Independence. Clayton Drugs supports all the area athletes and coaches on a successful season. 
Stop in and visit with one of their pharmacists today and be sure to check out their large selection of home decor and gift items. Clayton Drug in Strawberry Point, a local pharmacy you can trust. For the best selection of Chevy, Buick, and GMCs in the area, see Bob Stephen Motors in Manchester. We offer straightforward pricing and carry a low overhead, so we can pass those savings on to you. We also take care of you after the Sea Art Service Department with ASE trained technicians. For a full list of our on the web at bobstephenmotors.com. For your wedding receptions, parties, business ventures, or any event, call Edgewood Locker Event Center. Have the Edgewood Locker cater your next event. The Edgewood Locker Event Center and Edgewood Locker, a winning combination. Back into Algona, Iowa for this a Class A quarterfinal matchup between Bishop Garrigan and Etco. No score after that first half of play. Kind of a defensive struggle. Etco able to force three turnovers here in the first half. That And, I mean, all three of them it came at very crucial times. Just kind of unable to uh, get anything going once they get close to the end zone. and. I'm I'm trying to think that based off of turnovers, how far again has gotten, but I wanna say they haven't gotten too much farther thirty yard line so far, but a lot of great defensive things here going on between both teams and just a back and forth the first half gives us no score here. And uh Roger, what do we have for some offensive totals here for the team? Well uh Rushing yards for Edco, they're really struggling. They have 20 carries for, I have them for 23 yards. Our five of six passing for 48 with Parker Rochford with all five catches there for the 48 yards. Um, uh, Bishop Garrigan is running the ball fairly well. They got 24 carries for 101 and, uh, they're six of nine for 66 yards with one interception that, that stopped the drive, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the gutty performance by the, by the defense is, is, is what's keeping this game, you know, where it's at. It's not a real pretty game to watch. Um, you know, from, uh, Edco standpoint, offensively, they're going to have to figure out a way to run the ball a little bit without Preston Rochford in there. I don't see by just what we observe, there's any way that he's going to play in the second half. And, um, you know, for, uh, for the defensive side for Edco, you know, that, They've got everything pretty much under check except that, uh, except that fullback trap out of the, out of the spread when, uh, they, when Garrigan spreads, um, uh, Cole House out into a slot and it pulls a linebacker out of the middle of the field. And, and I'm sure that's what they're talking about because other than that, it really hasn't been, um, you know, really hasn't been, uh, too much they haven't been able to control. Obviously the, the turnovers has helped, but, you know, Edco's hung onto the ball. You know, they get the ball to start the second half, you know, big kick return, you know, get some things going, and uh, we'll see where we're at as we we're talking off the air. I see neither one of these teams kicking tonight. Maybe an extra point on a second touchdown if if you get the eight on the first one. But, uh, you know, in, in terms of, you know, a field goal or anything like that, I just, I just don't see that happening. So in a close game, it's going to be who gets in the end zone. Um, you know, it, it – is going to get to the end zone first is going to have it's going to have a distinct advantage i think yeah and uh the other thing that'll be interesting to see here is what sort of adjustment if any that edco does potentially to what their offensive attack is coming out in the second half with the injury early to uh, uh preston rochford on that first play again re-aggravating the uh leg area injury when he came back in on defense for a little bit. Uh, Edco has done a little bit of everything. They've had trips, formations to the left. They've gone with twins to both sides. Uh, they've stuck with what they have been doing in that I formation. So it's going to be interesting to see what they've been doing. But another you know, key factor to this game so far, too, outside of those couple of longer rushes by Garrigan, the Edco front seven has been doing a great job at getting pushes up front and everything and keeping that Garrigan rushing offense at bay to begin with. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, um, Cole House has uh, 12 rushes, and I've got him for 34 yards. And I think if you'd have 
told the Edco people, the Edco coaches before the game that he's going to have 34 yards on 12 rushes at halftime. I think they'd have, they'd have taken that. You know, like I said, it, it's going to be controlling the fullback and, you know, the option they've had, you know, Garrigan's had one or two times where their ball handling in the option is, has, has hurt them a little bit. Um, I could really see just by, by uh, watching here, you know, that I, I think Ed Coe's going to, you know, it, it might, you know, it might be right away. It might not be, and it might be out of a, a different formation than what what people have seen before with a different personnel. But I just think they're gonna they're gonna look to hit the big play, and uh, you know, and then turn it over to their defense. And they have shown that they have the opportunity to get open on pass plays. You have uh, Parker Ronsford with a couple of receptions there. You've had some other receivers that have been open, just not able to haul in the catch. So there's definitely a lot of things going forward that'll just be interesting to see what sort of attack Edco comes out with here in the second half. So coming close here to the beginning of our second half, we want to thank our sponsors once again, all of our uh, KMCH Sports Boosters, as well as our Edco sponsors, including the Edgewood Convalescent Home, Edgewood Feed Mill, Edgewood Locker and Event Center, the uh, Edgewood uh, Pump Service, Fenton Repair, Hair Works, Family uh, Works, Everett's Auto Parts, and Mama Jen Nails, and also Ray's Excavating. Thank you to all of them for uh, being a sports boosters here on the KMCH to bring you postseason football action for KMCH and KMCH.com. We'll take a break and come back as we get ready for the second half. No score here at halftime between Edco and Bishop Garrigan. You're listening to a high school playoff football from KMCH Sports. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on your outcome. It takes the right financial partner who cares as much about your future as you do, building a financial plan to meet your life's priorities and helping you achieve the financial security you're after. Focus on your financial outcome with Northwestern Mutual. Contact me, Mitch Payton, or Matt Schulte today. You and Northwestern Mutual, stronger together. American Trust and Savings Bank wishes all area athletes and coaching staff continued success. American Trust and Savings Bank with locations in Dyersville, Farley, Dubuque, and Des Moines. Simply better banking. Check them out at americantrust.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Community Insurance has insurance for all of your auto, farm, business, and home. Call the experts at Community Insurance in Edgewood. Go Vikings! Sight and good vision is very easy to take for granted until it is taken away. Advanced Eye Care Associates of Eastern Iowa is here to help you. Advanced Eye Care Associates of Eastern Iowa, located at 225 West Main Street in Manchester and 1113 West 3rd Street in Vinton. This is Phil from Gateway Appliance. We service most major brands of appliances, and we are Manchester's exclusive KitchenAid, Maytag, Whirlpool, and Amanda dealer. Stop in and see us today in the big blue building on West Main in Manchester, or call 563-927-3200. Delhi Lumber has products for every home and every budget. Delhi Lumber carries Midland Doors, which are one of the best values around. You can see Midland Doors today or call Delhi Lumber at 563-922-2404 for more information. Your Midland overhead door dealer, Delhi Lumber. Big town quality with small town service. This is Dr. Tim Collier from Dental Associates of Manchester. We take pride in the environment we provide our patients with a caring attitude and unsurpassed comfort. For the kind, compassionate, and competent dental care you deserve, call us at 927-GRIN. Dental Associates of Manchester, creating healthy smiles for life. Along with Edco Athletic Director Roger Wright, Trevor Hunt with you here on this you know, pretty ideal and perfect football weather Friday for this Class A, a quarterfinal matchup between Ed Coe and Bishop Garrigan. Just about ready to start our second half. No score after a uh, very much a defensive struggle in the first half. Garrigan defense just able to get stops. Ed Coe defense able to get turnovers. That's been the story of the game so far as we get ready for the second half and no score. And for Ed Coe, you know, coming into this, the uh, last time they were in this sort of situation, actually my freshman year when we were in the uh, quarter finals, but that was one the state still had that mileage rule for how far you could go. And we were luckily enough that we were able to get to play in the dome for a, a quarterfinal matchup when we were playing St. Ansgar that year. And, you know, a little bit different rules, obviously now is, you know, a little over three hour travel to get up here for the game tonight. but. 
I got to say, even just as somebody who was a freshman on that team, I wasn't going to play on the varsity game that night, but just being able to be dressed and in the, uh, on the sidelines and able to take in that atmosphere of playing in the dome, it's a really cool uh, thing to experience, and it's one of those things where for whoever comes out victorious in this game, very cool experience for either team as they get ready as to move on to the semifinals here, depending on who comes out victorious tonight. Yeah, that, there's no doubt about that. You know, in, in your situation, it was it was a little different because the format or the the timing of the games was so much different. Several years back, they went to all Fridays. You know, I think this is the third year of all Fridays in the playoffs, and you were playing on a, a Wednesday, Monday, Friday rotation. And the the mileage limits at that time, I believe, were 150 miles, and now there's none. Being all the games are on Friday night, mm-hmm. so uh, you know, it's it's just something to uh, you know, that's changed a little bit, um, and but whoever wins here tonight gets to advance to the dome. They know that, and so um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a great second half, a high ten, high and highly intense second half. So Ed Co is going to start with the ball here to start the uh, second half as we uh, just about hit zeros on the clock here to get ready for the second half. So Edco is going to start with the ball. We'll see what sort of halftime adjustments either team made coming out as we are deadlocked at a score of 0-0 to start our second half. So basically, whole new game here. You're just starting with two less quarters as both teams sit at 0-0. And, you know, we've touched on it a few times here. It's going to be a great second half. Defensive struggle so far, and we'll see what happens going forward in this second half. Yeah, this is a this is a critical play here. Even just getting getting good field position, catching the ball, maybe looking at a chance at a at a return here and and seeing what Edco can do. Bishop Garrigan will tee it up over on the uh, right hash mark, and you have number twenty four set to kick. That Sam Baskey, the quarterback. Uh, Capacious standing right next to the ball here as the kick is off and we are underway here in our second half. It's going to be a roller kick that's going to be taken by Rochford at the 20 to the 25. Cuts up field across to the 35-yard line and he's going to be brought down at about the 37 or 38-yard line and that's where Ed Kill will start first and 10 for the first drive here in the second half. So a good return set up there by Parker Rochford. They're going to spot him at the 38 for this first and 10. So Stryker comes out, calls play in the huddle, and Edco is going to stick with their regular formation to begin with. They have the you know, wide receiver and tight end to the left, one wide receiver to the right. High formation. Stryker going to turn and hand it off to Hansel, and he's going to be met in the backfield and dropped for a loss. We'll see where Fort Progress spots him at to officially have it be a loss of about, well, now they're moving it back a little bit, so a loss of about two on the play. It's going to bring up second and 12 now for Ed Joe. No score here early in our second half. Not even a minute old yet as Edco on their first drive. Second and 12. And now Edco going to switch it up to their four wide set. It's going to be Stryker in shotgun formation. I believe it's Hager to his right. And Stryker going to roll to his left a little bit. Plants, looks, throws under pressure. Now rolls back the other way. Finds the receiver downfield. It's going to be caught. I think that time's right around the first down yard. Like a yard short. So he's going to... Yep, officially be spotted about a yard short, but he does get across the uh, 45-yard line to the 46-yard line to bring up third and about two here for Edco. So a good job there by Stryker keeping the play alive. Was looking left early, nothing there. Under pressure, comes back to the right, and he's able to find Logan Himes for the reception. And Edco coming back out in that four-wide formation again. Striker in shotgun formation. He has Hager to his left, looking left. Throws as a man out there, a little high and unable to haul it in. Is number 30, Keegan Hansel, on the play. It was there. He was open on a little bit of a curl route, but a little high of a throw, unable to haul it in. And it's going to be fourth and two for Edco here on their first drive. And it appears that Edco is going to punt and go three and out on their first possession. Yeah, it was um, 
you know, Hansel was open, the ball just sailed a little bit. John Mice and Tristan Ferguson back to return the punt for Bishop Garrigan. Striker back in punt formation. Gets the punt away. It's going to be taken by Ferguson. Bobbles it a little bit, tries to bring it out to the left side. He's going to be spun around and brought down just across the 20-yard line to the 22. So a return of about a yard or two is all on the play. And it'll be first and 10 for the Golden Bears at the 22-yard line. So for Edco, comes out in the uh, second half, first play. Sticks with that eye formation on the first play, but loses a couple yards on it, and then quickly switches back to their four-wide formation. And I'm expecting that to be probably something that we'll see a little bit more here in this second half due to uh, Preston Rockford going down with injury. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle for first down for Garrigan. It's going to be number uh, two, Eric Toole, on the handoff, and he's going to be brought down after a pickup of about a yard or two. First met in the backfield. By, well, I guess we don't have a number 52 listed on the roster for Ed Joe, but that's going to be brought. That's uh, Balls. Okay. These are two numbers. Okay. Max Balls. Balls. Normally listed as 42. Number 52 tonight makes the tackle. So a good job there. Coming out of his linebacker spot to make the tackle as four wide now formation for Bishop Garrigan. As dropping back to pass under pressure. Going to be brought down for a sack. Brought down by. Number 34 for Edco. Ethan that is Stainer. Ethan Stainer, the sophomore, getting back there and getting the sack. And that's going to bring up third and long for Bishop Garrigan. So Edco coming out ready to go, picking up right where they left off on defense. And more of the same here so far early in this second half. We're still at no score with nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Yeah. Big third down here for the Vikings on defense. Three wide receivers to the right. Running back behind the quarterback, Capacious, who's going to roll to his right. Now he's going to look and throw it upfield on the run. And I believe the Garrigan fans looking for a pass interference flag, but they're not going to get it. The pass is going to be overthrown, incomplete. And it's going to be fourth and long now for Garrigan. So they also go three and out on their first drive here of the second half. Yeah, I, was, I don't know if both, both uh, defender and receiver went down down there. I don't know if they got tangled up in their feet or what happened over there. The official's a whole lot closer than we are to that play, so uh, I'll just reserve judgment for him. Ferguson was the intended receiver on the play, and back to a punt is Garrigan. Stainer is back to receive right around midfield. Going to hit at midfield and then take an Edco bounce and then <laughs> take a Garrigan bounce after that and be marked officially down at the 49-yard line. So Ed Hill and Garrigan both trade three-and-out defensive stops to begin this second half. And now, we, based off of the field position that Ed Hill was able to get, based off the kickoff return and then the nice punt before, Ed Hill at the 49-yard line, just 51 yards away from the end zone, as we still sit at a score of 0-0 zero to zero with 8.43 to go in our third quarter. Echo. It's huge at this time to, to, for the second half to keep the, the field position in your uh, in your favor. It's going to be a handoff to Kirby on the right side out of the eye formation. He gets across the 50 and brought down at about the 46-yard uh, line. So able to pick up six on the play is Kirby. So a little bit of a personnel change there for Edco. They lined up Kirby as the uh, tailback there in the eye formation. He's able to pick up about five on the play to make it second and five. Yeah, they went they went back to Hager at fullback and put Kirby at tailback. A um, little different style runner than what uh, than what Hansel is. Second down, five yards to go. I formation for Edco. It's Kirby in the backfield again, and it's going to be a handoff to Kirby. Straight downhill, he gets across the 45 and tripped up at about the 44-yard line. Picked up about three on the play, and it's going to be third down and three for Edco. Good downhill running there by Kirby. Yeah, Kirby, Kirby will give you the downhill, especially when you get the, get the running start. Um, Kerrigan on that play, it looks like the adjustment they've made is they're going to their five when, when Edco is in, uh, in the eye, and then now they're coming back in their four, more of a four-three look here. 
four wide receivers as Stryker is going to drop back to pass. Looks as a slant, hits it to uh, number 30, Hansel. It's caught across the uh, first down yard line and goes to his knees to catch it, but it's not until he gets the first down. So a good play, catch and throw there on the slant to number 30, Keegan Hansel, the other sophomore contributing for Ed Coe. And it's going to be first and 10 now for the Vikings with the ball placed at the uh, 36 yard line. As that show now goes back to that I formation. It again is a Kirby at the tailback position and Hager at fullback. It's going to be a handoff and he's going to be met in the backfield and dropped for about a loss of one. So good pursuit there by Garrigan. The uh, tackle on the play by uh, Preston for the uh, Golden Bears is going to make it, yeah. going to make it now uh, second and 12 after the loss of two on first down. And right away, Ed Coe comes back to that three wide receiver set, trip to the right, tight end to the left. It's Hager to the right of Stryker in the shotgun. He's going to drop back to pass. He looks, throws it deep. He has a man out there. It's going to be caught and brought in for the Dana. touchdown. Dana with the touchdown for Ed Coe to get the first point put on the board. A great catch and throw to Spencer Stainer, who takes it in from the tight end position on that left side. And Edco is on the board first with 6.27 left to go in our third quarter. It's now 6-0, to zero. Edco with the lead. Yeah, that was just a, it was what we were talking about um, at halftime that I thought Edco would take some shots deep. And what they did is they over-focused the, uh, okay, now they made a wire out of me because they're going to try and kick the extra point. Um, <laughs> But they, they overshifted to the trips and went back to the single side and uh, and got the got the six out of it. Stainer scores a touchdown and then goes in to kick the extra point and hits the oh, cross up on the low and is not going to go through. So the extra point no good after it hits the uh, crossbar and that makes our score six to zero. We'll take a quick break. Six point seven left to go in our third quarter. You're listening to Echo Playoff Football from KMTH Sports. Jay's Auto Supercenter in Manchester has quality pre-owned vehicles, great financing options, a full-service department, body shop, and detail department. See their full line of vehicles online at jsautosales.net. That's Jay's Auto. Customer satisfaction is their number one priority. Jay's Auto! This is Jamie Vasky from Don & Walt LLC, your independent Linux dealer in Manchester. For residential or commercial plumbing, cooling, and heating needs, and top quality Linux furnaces and air conditioners, see Don & Walt LLC on East Main Street, Manchester, or call 927-2232. Edco gets on the board first to make it 6-0 to zero here with 6.27 left to go in our third quarter. Trevor Hunt along with Edco Athletic Director Roger Wright to bring you this Class A a quarterfinal between the Edco Vikings and the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears. 6-0 our score now after the uh, pass play. Ethan Stryker hits Spencer Stainer for the touchdown. As lining up to a kick now is Stainer who's going to kick it away. Going to roll across the field and be picked up on the bounce by Garrigan. He's across the uh, 35, about to the 40-yard line. Return on the play by number 20, that's Colby Graves. And Echo is, or excuse me, Bishop Garrigan going to start now. First and 10, ball at the uh, 39-yard line. So, Echo gets something going there with that second drive of the second half after both teams traded three and outs. Uh, Edco kind of doing a little bit of mix and matching here, changing some personnel around, but doing that I formation as well as the trips and the twin formation and it's worked out for them so far as they get on the board first. We'll see what Garrigan can do on their second drive of the second half. It's going to be a handoff up the middle and met and dropped. No gain on the play. A couple of Edco defenders there, including number 74. That is... Uh, Spencer Amling, as well as number 76, David Horseman, on the uh, tackle for Edco after the uh, carry by Preston uh, Colehouse doesn't get much of anything, and it's going to be a second down and 10 with the ball at the 39-yard line. Second and 10. Two high receivers left, two to the right for Garrigan, as they're going to look and do a... Uh, 
Bowl screen out to the outside. It's caught by number 25. That is Preston Colehouse to the outside, and he's able to get around and close to the first down marker before being shoved out of bounds. He's going to be officially ruled out at about the 47-yard line. That's going to bring up third down and two for the Golden Bears. So uh, here again, also coming out with a little bit different look there. They go back to that four wide. Normally has done that quick-hitting uh, trap play to a tool who's in the backfield, and here's that formation again. And that's what they're going to do this time. Hand it off to Tool, and he's going to be met in the backfield. No gain. I'm the loss yard, I think. They will have him down for a loss on the play. I believe number seven, Cal Hager, was the first one to get back there and meet him from his uh, defensive end position. And it's going to bring up fourth and three for Garrigan. And it appears that on this one, they're going to be lining up to go for it. We'll see what they end up coming out to do. Yeah, it could be another uh, hard count area, too. High formation for the Golden Bears. Two wide receivers to the right. Both fans set the fans up on their feet. It's going to be the uh, double read option. Second man through is going to pick up the first down across the 50 to the uh, 46 yard line. That is going to be the carry by Colehouse, and that's going to pick up a first and 10 for Garrigan after the fourth down conversion. Yeah, they're running that. They're running a little of that Belly series, and and uh, that makes you count for all three backs because you, you're always you're always afraid that uh, um, the pieces is going to pull it back. And this is going to be a handoff right up the middle to Tool. He's able to pick up, get across the 45 uh, yard line down to the 43 uh, yard line. Able to pick up about three on the play, second down and seven after the three yard rush on first down by Tool. Two wide receivers to the right. Tight end in on the left eye formation for Garrigan. Quarterback capacious under center, and he's going to do that belly read. This time he's going to keep it himself and pick up about two yards on the play. And capacious slow to get up on it as to be helped up by one of his teammates. He's able to get about to the 40 yard line, just short of it. It's going to bring up a third down and four. And uh, capacious. Staying in the game, but was a little slow to get up after that carry. Third and four for Garrigan. This time, three wide receivers to the right. It's Tool on the backfield behind Capacious under center. He's going to turn and hand off. It's that front play again. He's got the first down. And go, go, hey! Rockford, get the water! Rockford keeps fighting with the ball, so Tool picks up the first down, but before getting brought down, Rochford takes the ball away for the fourth turnover of the game, and Edco is going to take it over first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Great heads-up play there by number 14, Parker Rochford, to take the ball away and give it first and 10 for Edco. Just a great play by Rochford there. It was like they're playing tug of war with the ball. He didn't go low. He, he, he stood him up. And uh, so I know took the ball out of his hand. Silver up six to zero at the thirty-five yard line. It's going to be a handoff to Kirby. Breaks a few tackles. Runs hard. Great downhill hard running by Kirby to fight for what he could get. That's going to go down the stat book as a pickup of two. But he earned those yards with how hard he was running. It's going to be a second down and eight. After the pickup by Kirby, 6-0 our score. Edco in the lead with three minutes and ten seconds left to go in our third quarter. As Edco came out in that I formation on the first play, stick, sticking with that I formation here on play number two. It's Stryker under center. He has Hager and Kirby in the backfield behind him. And off going to go to Kirby again, running downhill. Not much of anything on this one. Gets back to the line of scrimmage is off. Maybe he's... Well, I gave him a... They gave him a pretty good spot. He's going to end up uh, about a the down marker. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they got one, but all right. So that's going to bring up now third and seven for Edco with the ball sitting at about the uh, thirty-eight yard line. We'll see what Edco does here after forcing their fourth turnover of the game, up six to zero. They're going to come out with that four wide set, two to the right, two to the left. It's Stryker in the backfield. He's going to drop back. Looking to his left, throws it over there. Has a man, it's caught. First down, Echo. He's getting the, the uh, little curl route that they tried to hit before to Keegan Hansel. That was a little high. This one he's able to bring in. And it's going to be first and 
Uh, first and 10 for Edco as they're able to get it across the 45-yard line. They'll be first and 10 at the 46. Yeah, they've run that route three times now and completed two of them, both for eight-yard gains, and they probably had eight or 10 on the other one when the ball was just a little high. But also, i got to believe at this point in time that uh, Hansel, as a sophomore, settled into the game a little better here. So on this one, two... Uh, four wide receivers set again for Ed Joe, but this time it's Kirby in the backfield, and it's going to be a straight quarterback run right up the middle. He's got room across midfield to the 45 and brought down after getting the first down. Ethan Stryker, quarterback run all the way, brings it down to the 42 yard line. First and 10, Ed Joe after the uh, run there by Ethan Stryker. And now it looks like Bishop Garrigan is going to take a timeout. So Edco on the move, up 6-0, to 150 left to go in our third quarter. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Edco Playoff Football from KMCH Sports. Everett's Auto Parts is your farm and automotive one-stop shop. See Karen or Mary for your family's hair care needs at HairWorks Family Hair Care. And for your nail needs, see Mama Jen's Nails all in Edgewood. Go Vikings! Family fun and great food await you at Lightning Lanes Family Center and Captain and Tennille Sports Bar. Come out for a fun night of bowling or watch the big game on their 10-foot HD big screen. And, of course, great food and your favorite beverages. Lightning Lanes Family Center and Captain and Tennille Sports Bar on East Main in Manchester. Farmer Savings Bank proudly supports all area athletes and their coaching staff. For all your banking needs, visit them in Colesburg, Elkport Garber, Strawberry Point, Arlington, and Aurora, or online at FarmerSavingsBank.com. Member FDIC. It'll be first and ten for Ed Coe, coming out of the timeout by Bishop Garrigan. Edco with the 6-0 lead with a minute 50 left to go in our third quarter of this Class A quarterfinal matchup here. As Edco is going to come out in their four wide receiver set again. To the right, to the left. Hager in the backfield next to Stryker. He's going to drop back the pass, looking left. And looking, throws it long. Has Steiner out there, but a little bit overthrown and out of bounds. Incomplete. Steiner, the intended receiver, and he'll bring up second and 10 for the Vikings. Good safe play there by Stryker. He's doing threw it out there, and the only person that was going to get it was Stainer, and if he didn't get it, it was going to be out of bounds to where there's nothing bad going to happen. So second down and 10 yards to go for Ed Kill as they stick with that four wide receiver set. Uh, this time it's going to be Kirby in the backfield next to Stryker to his right, and it's going to be that quarterback run right up the middle again. This time Stryker is going to be met and fall forward for a pick of about a yard or two going to be marked close to the 40-yard line, so it's going to be a pickup of two and bring up third and eight for the Vikings. So Ethan Stryker getting into the uh, carrying here, a little bit different look for getting some people some different carries as Ed Cho going to come out once again. Four wide to the right, to the left. He again has Hager to his right. Shotgun formation for Stryker. Third and eight, drops back to pass. He's looking to the right, looking, throws, has a man out there, but it's going to be underfilled and picked off by Capacious and brought down right away at the 18-yard line. So Stryker was hit right as soon as he was thrown that ball, a little bit underthrown. Capacious able to go up and get the interception. And let's see if the official is talking about something here. Let's see what we have going on. They haven't moved. I'm thinking that they, there's there's some leaves that are on the field here at the stadium, and I'm thinking the one official thought it was a flag, but it is not. So it's going to be first and 10 for Bishop Garrigan after the interception. They'll start first and 10 at the 18, trailing 6-0. to zero. Edco currently with the lead with a minute to go in our third quarter. Yeah, I think uh, actually that the flip of that is that's about as good as a punt. So the handoff is going to go right up the middle. He's going to get to the 20-yard line is the running back Cole House. He's able to pick up about three on the play to the 20-yard line. Second down and seven upcoming for the Golden Bears with 40 seconds left to go in our third quarter. Edco currently up 6-0. to zero. Capacious breaks the huddle. And they're going to come out in that four-wide set with Tool behind quarterback Capacious under center. And he's going to drop back to pass. 
They're going to look to take a shot here. He's got his man number 80 to spot to the 40-yard line. That is the big tight end, T.J. Shore. was able to get out to the 40, a pick of a 20 on the play, and it'll be first and 10 for Bishop Garrigan with 23 seconds left to go in our third quarter. Just a tough receiver to cover when you have a 6'4", 230 wideout out there. Yeah, he's, he's just so big. And uh, we got four wide again, but this time it's going to be quarterback Capacious in the uh, shotgun formation. He's going to drop back to pass and now tuck it and run upfield, and he's going to be met and dropped, taken down on the play by number 74, Spencer Amling, right as soon as Capacious gets back to the line of scrimmage at the 40. And again, Capacious a little slow to get up, but that's going to do it for the third quarter. We have one quarter to go in Class A quarterfinal matchup. Let's go six. Bishop Kerrigan, zero. We'll take a break and come back for the fourth quarter. You're listening to Extra Playoff Football from KMPA Sports. Steve Moyle Masonry, a family-owned commercial masonry contractor based in Manchester. Quality is what we're about. Visit us online at smoylemasonry.com. See the friendly experts at any community savings bank to find out about simply free checking or visit them at csbiowa.com. Community Savings Bank member FDIC. Beofield is your headquarters for all your seed, chemical, and fertilizer needs. They have professional service and quality products needed to bring the best crop to market. Beofield, providing growth opportunity for 18 locations across northern Iowa and southern Minnesota. Ray's Excavating, your ag expert specializing in tiling in waterways. Ray's Excavating LLC in Edgewood, they work dirt cheap. Ray's Excavating in Edgewood, wish the Edco Vikings the best of luck. The Eastern Iowa Shopping News and the Dyersville Commercial recognize the hard work and dedication of all area athletes. Check out the weekly sports section in the commercial for scores and information. The Eastern Iowa Shopping News and Dyersville Commercial, supporting your communities. One quarter to go in this Class A quarterfinal between Edco and Bishop Garrigan. Edco with the 6-0 lead as we start for the fourth quarter. It's going to be quarterback Capacious rolling out to the right, and he's going to tuck it and run. He's to the 40, down to the 45, and driven out of bounds. Able to pick up five yards on the second down carry. It's going to bring up third and five for the Golden Bears. So Edco able to get the first point scored for tonight on the board there in that third quarter from a pass play. Striker to Stainer. They have the 6-0 lead. And we're in for an exciting finish here in this quarterfinal matchup. Third and five now for the uh, Golden Bears as we get our fourth quarter underway. No doubt about a big third down here for both teams. So Garrigan going to come out with three wide, one tight end to the left, Capacious under center. He has Tool, and he's going to hand it off to him right up the middle. He's met by a couple of guys right around the first down yard marker. He appears to be a bit short, and they will be marking him just short, so it's going to be fourth down and inches, another fourth and inches in this game, and quickly to the line is Bishop Garrigan in their eye formation. Probably expecting a quarterback sneak right up the middle. We'll see what happens here. Fourth and goal, and that is what it's going to be. Capacious foot uh, pushes right up, up forward, able to pick up a yard or two on the play, and it's going to be first down for Bishop Garrigan after the quarterback keep right up the middle on fourth down by Capacious. So across midfield now is Bishop Garrigan. It'll be first and ten with the ball officially spotted at the 49-yard line. And we got three wide receivers to the left for the Golden Bears. It's Tool in the backfield, Capacious under center. He's going to turn and hand it right off to Tool, running hard right up the middle. He's able to pick up about six on the play across the 45 to the 44, where it will now be a second down and four for Bishop Garrigan. That's about the only play they've ran out of that formation when they went trips. They went went right to the fullback on that diver trap. Here's that formation again. Three wide receivers to the left, tight end to the right. He has Tool. And uh, Capacious barking out some signals at the Alliance scrimmage, and it's going to be a pass. He's going to be brought down for a sack. That is number seven, Cal Hager. I believe he was unblocked coming off the edge. Looks like there was some confusion there by the Garrigan offense as uh, Capacious 
Fake the handoff, drop back to pass. Didn't see him coming from his blind side. And Kyle Hager with the sack all the way back to midfield. It's going to be a loss of about seven on the play and bring up third down and 11. I think what they were doing was they were checking to a tight end seam route. And I'm not sure that, you know, that the play got slowed down and uh, um, Hager was able to come off the end. Two wide receivers to the right, to the left. It's Tool in the three-point stance behind Capacious and Shotgun. He's going to drop back. He's looking left. Throws it across. There's a man wide open. It's caught. He's across the 35, to the 30, to the 20, and pushed out of bounds. The flag is thrown on the play. We'll see what we have. Number 12, Ferguson, was wide open and brings it all the way to the 17-yard line. We'll see what the oh, hold is. Oh, they called a pick. And that is what a they're going to do. So the uh, – Call goes against Bishop Garrigan. It's going to wipe out the big play on third down. Here comes the official call. It's going to be offensive pass interference against Bishop Garrigan. And that will have... That's 15, I believe. So that will wipe out the third and long conversion to bring them all the way down to the 17. And because of that penalty, it's going to bring them all the way back as the official's still walking. That's going to bring him all the way back to the 35-yard line. So a big swing field position there, going from the 17 all the way back to their own 35-yard line. And that's going to bring up third down and a very long here for Bishop Garrigan. Well, the, the Bishop Garrigan receiver was wide open, and evidently I didn't see it, but the official was right on top of it. And I'm guessing they ran some sort of pick play or got it or held him down, just threw a block downfield to get him open. So we'll see what Garrigan does here on third down and a 25, ball to 35. Four wide receiver set, shotgun formation for Capacious. He's going to drop and another flag's going to be thrown. Let's see what we have, and I believe it's a motion. Or encroachment. Yep, that's what's going to be on Garrigan again, so back him up another five to now make it third and 30 with the ball sitting at the 30-yard line. So, Garrigan making some self-inflicted wounds here to back themselves up. Third and 30 with the ball sitting at the 30-yard line. So, Garrigan came out in a formation we haven't seen yet tonight on that first one. We'll see if they stick with that formation here or what they do. They're going to come out. They have a three to the right, tight end to the left. Capacious is going to be in shotgun formation. He's going to roll out to his right, look to throw. Throws back to his left. Has his big receiver out there, and it's going to be incomplete overthrown. The uh, Garrigan fans all over the officials right now wanting a play, but it's to no avail. The pass is going to fall incomplete. It's going to be fourth down and very long. The big receiver, to sure, was the intended target on the play. Very high throw, though, to overthrow a 6'4 wide receiver. <laughs> so, fourth yeah. down and 30 for Garrigan. They're going to have to punt it away here as a back to return the punt is number 14, Parker Rockford. And Ed Code, you got to think, unless he doesn't field this punt and it rolls for a while, is going to start off this drive with great field position. We'll see what happens. The punt is away. Rockford is going to back up and catch it at his 25-yard line. He calls for a fair catch. So the ball officially going to be marked at the 24-yard line. So a good punt there to flip the field position a little bit by Garrigan. Edco going to start with the ball first and 10 at the 24-yard line. And Edco with the 6-0 lead with 9.29 left to go in our ball game. Again, want to thank some of our sponsors here for bringing you high school football on KMCH for the Edco Vikings, CNL Drainage, Community Insurance, Community Savings Bank, and Del Clay Farm Equipment as Edco comes down their I formation. Striker under center, a little bit of a hard count. There's a flag thrown immediately. He's going to look and throw. Has the man out there, Stainer, going to be thrown out of bounds, though, incomplete. But there was a flag thrown right at the very beginning, which makes me think there's an illegal shift on Edco, and that is what's going to be called. So, after not too many penalties being called in that first half, or really in that third quarter, this fourth quarter has been pretty full of them, as Edco now backs up five yards to make it now first and 15 with the ball at the 20-yard line. 
Yeah, I think one of the running backs were just leaning forward and never really came set with what the illegal motion was there. Um, but, uh, you know, this is – Ed Coe took the shot down the field that time again. High formation for Ed Coe. Hager at the fullback position and Kirby at the tailback. He's going to turn on the trap and hand it off to Kirby, and he's not going to get anywhere. going to lose a yard on the play. That's going to make it now second and a 16 with the ball spotted between the 19 and 20-yard line. So a good push there by the Golden Bear defensive front line. Kirby unable to run anywhere off of the little bit of a trap play. Yeah, it was it was just the, the halfback counter that uh, Ed Coe made hay on last Friday night, and Bishop Garrigan has that uh, has that scouted very well. So Ed Coe comes out, and there are four wide receivers set now with Hager to the right of striker in shotgun formation. He's going to drop the pass, look into the right, now tucks it and runs. And he fumbles the ball, but picks it back up. But not until he's brought down for a loss of about two or three more on the play. So after Garrigan has a third and long, Edco has a third and long of their own. It's going to be third down and about 17 now, with the ball sitting at the 17-yard line. I'd be surprised if Edco does anything very extravagant here. Edco with the lead, 6-0, 8-15 and counting, left to go in our ball game. Stryker breaks the huddle. They're going to be in that four-wide set. He has Hager to his left, Stryker in the shotgun formation. And Stryker gets the snap. It's going to drop back to pass. Pass time, looks, throws it deep, has a man out there. Stainart's over, thrown high and batted down. It's Spencer Stainart, the intended receiver on the play. Ferguson, number 12, is the... Uh, defender on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down and long for Edco. Forced the punt here with 7.58 left to go in our ball game. Yeah, I just tried to air it out there, and the Golden Bears did a nice job. They were just dropping off in their four deep and matching up and went up and tipped the ball away. So striker back to punt, two men back to return for Garrigan. Stryker gets this one away. This one's going to be a low-line driver that's going to be... Yeah, I'm not sure if he touched it or not, but it's going to end up rolling out of bounds at about the uh, 40 or 41-yard line. Unable to field it cleanly was number... Uh, appears to be number 23. That's John Mice. And it is going to be marked at the 41-yard line officially. First and 10 Golden Bears at the uh, 41-yard line as Edco currently with the lead 6-0 to zero with 7.49 left to go in our game. So we'll see what Garrigan comes out to do on their next drive. They definitely had stuff going for them on their last drive before some penalties. Some self-inflicted wounds kind of pushed them back a little bit and wiped it out. They had the ball originally all the way down to the 17-yard line and ended up having to punt from their own 30. So we'll see what they do here in the I formation. Two wide receivers to the right. It's going to be a handoff up the middle of the Colehouse, and he's again met and dropped after he picks up about two. That's going to be a tackle on the play made by uh, Logan Hines for Ed Joe. Also in there was Cameron Kirby. And it's going to be second down and eight for the Golden Bears. I'd be surprised not to see that trips formation and uh, pullback ISO here before long. That's a play that Golden Bears have had all kinds of success with. Sticking with that eye formation once again. Two wide receivers to the right. Eye formation for Bishop Garrigan. It's going to be the uh, quarterback option. He tried to pitch it by nice by Kirby there. Kirby meets him in the backfield. It looked like Capacious was still going to try and pitch it while being brought down, which <laughs> could have been just a terrible decision on the part of the Garrigan quarterback, but instead holds on to it, gets brought down for a loss. It's going to be third down and 15 with the ball at the 36-yard line as the Edco fans make it loud, and a timeout is going to be taken by Bishop Garrigan. Edco with the lead, 6-0 to zero, with 6.50 left to go in our game. We'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to high school playoff football from KMCA Sports. For fan food, not fast food, visit your after-the-game headquarters, Manchester Dairy Queen. It's quick, it's easy, your family will love it. Manchester Dairy Queen. It's no secret that people come to Fairway in Manchester for their famous meats, but as you dash back to the counter to pick up your USDA choice ribeyes, don't be surprised if you find yourself lingering among the delicious fruits and vegetables in the produce department. Shop Fairway in Manchester for low prices and all your grocery needs. 
The Edgewood Convalescent Home, modernized with that home away from home feeling. Lincolnwood Assisted Living has home-like accommodations and personal service and health care available when you need assistance. Edgewood Convalescent Home and Lincolnwood Assisted Living, the peace of mind you need for your family's special needs. Third down and 15 for Bishop Garrigan. Edco with the 6-0 lead with 6.50 left to go in our ball game. Third and 15. Sure is out here wide. I'd be surprised if they're not going to try and go to him. Be critical for the line to get some pressure on here. Dropping back to pass, and that is where they're looking. They're going to throw it out to him, and he drops it. It was definitely one that was catchable there, and they did do exactly what you said. They threw it out to their big receiver, T.J. Schur. Unable to haul it in, good coverage on the play there by Spencer Stainer, getting the tough task of, of covering the 6'4", 230 receiver. It did hit him in the hands, and he also had a chance to catch it laying on the ground on his back because of those weird bounces that the ball took. But instead, it falls to the ground, 4th and 15 now for the Golden Bears. And it appears that Bishop Garrigan will punt it away here with the ball sitting at the 36-yard line, and it once again is Parker Rochford back to return the punt. Low snap that bounces back to the punter, and this punt not going to go as far as the ones you usually do, but then takes a good arrogant bounce after hitting down at the 38-yard line and then rolls out of bounds. Going to be marked at the 34. So Edco going to start first and 10 at the 34-yard line, and they lead 6-0 with 6.35 left to go in our game. It'd be great to get a six minute and 35 yard drive. Doesn't matter if it ends up in points here or not. Just kill the clock. <laughs> but uh, Echo's had a tough time running the football tonight. So it's going to be four wide receiver set. And Kirby to the left of the striker. He's going to throw out to Stainer. Catches it right at the line of scrimmage and fights forward for what he can. Good job putting both hands on the ball, not get it stripped but he's unable to pick up any yardage on the play after the uh, quick little swing pass. Maybe gets about a yard on the play. It's going to be second down and nine officially for the Vikings. 6.14 left to go now as that clock runs and it go up 6-0. That's a tough play with Schnur playing defensive end out there at six foot four, or whatever he is. He's come, he really messes that play up. He's come very close a couple of times at hitting that ball down a couple of times that coach tried to do those quick swing passes out. Four wide receiver set again, this time coming in motion. And Stryker is going to grab it and roll out to his right. Looks, throws. I throw out to uh, uh, excuse me, Parker Rochford as the intended receiver on the play, but overthrown him a little bit. That will stop the clock and bring up a third and nine. 5.46 left to go in the game now. Edco up 6-0. So so Echo going with a little bit different look out of that Twins formation. They've done it a couple of times before where they brought Hansel in motion. They did that here. Looks like they might have had him in the flat, but a little bit of an overthrow as Echo goes back to that I formation, and it's going to be Hansel as the tailback this time and Kirby at pullback. I formation, striker under center. He's going to drop back and look to throw a slant, and it's going to be unable to be caught, but a flag is thrown right away. Makes me wonder if there is a legal formation for Edco, and it's going to be a legal motion. So, a false start on Edco is the call. We'll see if Garrigan elects to push him back five yards and redo third down, or if they have it be fourth and nine. They do decline it, so it'll be fourth and nine for Edco as they'll get set to punt it away. So, they look to hit Parker Rochford on that slant that they hit a little bit earlier. Ethan Stryker. Got it through those tall defensive linemen for Garrigan, but unable to haul it in was Rockford, and they're going to be set to punt it away. Again, two back to receive for Garrigan. That is John Mites as well as Tristan Ferguson. And Stryker gets the punt away. Good punt's going to be taken by Mites, and they fake the reverse, and he's going to bring it out to the 40. He swarmed down. Now there's a flag that's thrown. Great couple of tackles. Gets across the 45 to about the 46. And now we have a flag on the play. Two Vikings slow to get up, and uh, we have Kirby gets up, but now we have Parker Rochford. Parker Rochford's down. Parker Rochford now down on the ground for an injury. 
So, and I believe the flag ends up being a uh, personal foul uh, targeting penalty, I believe, is what they ended up calling it on. So Yeah, he didn't give the right. I mean, he did the double fist together. So I believe that will back up Garrigan quite a bit as they uh, look at the Parker Rockford. He is up on his feet, walking slowly to the sideline, and Garrigan is going to start first and 10, but back at the 25-yard line after the good return and a little bit of delay in the action as Parker Rockford makes his way slowly to the sideline. I want to thank our uh, sponsors for playoff football here on KMCH for Edco once again, Deers Realty, Edgy Megs, Edgewood Auto and Tire, Edgewood Sun Supply, TNT Power Sports, and the Garnerville Auto and Tire, Edgewood Convalescent Home, Edgewood Feed Mill, and the Edgewood Locker and Event Center. So first and 10, the ball will be placed at the 25-yard line as Garrigan comes out. 5.32 left to go in our game. Edco up 6-0 in this Class A quarterfinal matchup. And both fans and crowd getting really into this game now. Two right receivers to the left, and it's going to be a rollout pass to the left. He's under pressure. Nowhere to go. Tucks it, brings it up, and now he's across the 30 to the 35, down to the 40, and drug down out of bounds by number 44. Cameron Kirby making the tackle after the run by quarterback Capacious, and this Garrigan crowd didn't like Kirby kind of stood there for a little bit after making the tackle, and the Garrigan fans not very happy with that, looking for a flag. So it's going to be first and 10 with the ball at the 40-yard line. 5.22 to go in our game. The clock stops with Capacious running out of bounds, but he was able to pick up the first down and more on the play. Pick up of about 15 in high formation for Bishop Garrigan. Capacious going to turn and do the misdirection handoff to Colehouse around the left side. He's across the 40 and brought down. Great tackle in space by number 22, Spencer Stainer, after the pickup of about two on the play. Second down and eight now for the Golden Bears. Parker Rochford is back in on defense, which is great to see. Second down and eight. Golden Bears. The uh, clock is running. They didn't call him. Out of bounds, able to make the tackle inbound. So 450 and counting to go in our game. Edco up six to zero. We're in for a great finish here and a lot of fast paced action. Going to be a toss play to the outside. Here is Cole House. He brings it across the 45 down to the 46 yard line. He picks up about five or six on the play and able to bring up a very manageable third down and four for Garrigan. The clock runs now with 425 on the clock. So a big third down upcoming here for both teams. Both crowds getting up on their feet for this third down and four play. As Garrigan comes up in their traditional formation of two wide receivers to the left, tight end and right and eye formation. It's capacious under center. It's going to bring a man in motion. Going to be a fake toss, pullback, trap up the middle. He's able to break a couple tackles here right close to that first down marker. It's all going to matter on the spot. He's brought down right at midfield, which is where they need to get for the first down. And we'll see what they end up causing for the first down. And they're going to bring out another measurement. So another measurement on the way here by our officials. Can't tell over there that the marker might be just a hair past the past the yard line, and the ball is not. So we'll see again. <laughs> This is where we check to see how good of a straight line is painted on the field as they bring out the uh, measurement six. And he is going to have the first down. He has the first down by the nose of the football. So first and ten, the clock will run on the uh, ready for play whistle with four minutes to go. Edco up 6-0, but Bishop Garrigan driving right at midfield. And the clock runs as Garrigan breaks the huddle. Sticking, oh, nope, going to switch up their formation a little bit. Two wide receivers to the left. Tight end to the right and a wide receiver to the right. Shotgun formation. And it's going to be dropping back to pass. It's going to be a screen. He's got a man. He's across the midfield to the 45 and drug out of bounds. Pick up about five on the play. Good job by Kirby. Recognizing the screen, able to get out there and make the tackle right away on Colehouse. To what looked like it could have been a pretty big gain turns out to only a gain of about four. They're going to mark it officially. And it's going to be second down and six with 3.42 left to go in our game. The clock stopped with the out-of-bounds tackle. 
Second and six, ball out to 46, 3.42 left to go. Echo up 6-0. to zero. Two wide receivers to the right eye formation for Garrigan. It's going to be a handoff to the fullback, and he's going to be met in the backfield and dropped. Great push there by number 74, Spencer Amling for Edco. Also had some other helpers there to help clean it up, including Logan Himes for Edco. And he's going to end up losing a, a yard on the play is Eric Toll to make it now third down and seven with the ball on the 46 yard line. The clock runs at 315. So 315 to go in our game. A lot of action coming your way here. 3-10 and counting. 6-0 Echo with the lead. Two wide receivers to the left. One to the right. Garrigan shotgun formation. Going to roll out to his right. Under pressure. Gets around. Gets across the 45 and brought down at the 43-yard line. He's going to be about two yards short of the first down. Fourth and two. The clock stops as Colehouse gets uh, tackled out of bounds. Fourth and... I guess they're going to move it back a little bit. It's going to be fourth and three. 2.57 left to go in our game. Fourth and three. Big, big, big play of the game here. And it's going to have a timeout be taken by Garrigan. This is so, Garrigan's last timeout also. So, with 2.57 left to go, Edco with a 6-0 lead. We'll take a quick break with the timeout. You're listening to Edco Postseason Football from KMTA Sports. Just like a great coach, State Farm agents like me, Julie Smith, can help you develop a game plan for your insurance needs. Whether it's car, home, life, health, or business insurance, I can dig into the playbook and help you find the affordable coverage you need. For all your insurance needs, call on a winning team, the Julie Smith State Farm Agency in Manchester. Edgewood Pump Service is your state-certified submersible pump installer with over 44 years' experience. Edgewood Pump Service is open 24 hours a day. Call Edgewood Pump Service anytime for reliable service. Go Vikings! It's fourth down and three. 2.57 left to go in our game. Kerrigan faces a fourth and three from the 43-yard line. Edco currently with the 6-0 lead. want to thank the uh, remaining sponsors we have here for Edco Sports, Edwards Pump Service, Fenn Repair, Hairworks Family Hairworks, Everett's Auto Parts, and Mama Jen's Nails, and Ray's Excavating. As Garrigan comes out, they have their big wide receiver, Schnurr, split out by himself to the right, one-on-one, two wide receivers to the left, and now Edco is going to take a timeout after seeing the formation that Garrigan comes in. So that traditional chess match that you see for football games coming out there, Garrigan takes the timeout to see what play they want to run. Edco then comes out, sees the formation, calls a timeout of their own. So we still 2.57 left to go in our game. It's going to be fourth down and three for Bishop Garrigan. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Bishop Garrigan comes out in the same formation or if uh, they switch things up after Edco called the timeout then. And I don't know if Edco will switch personnel or not. I kind of doubt it. I think they probably got in the game who they want in the game for down and distance purposes. Yes, you pointed out right away the big 6'4", 230 receiver, TJ Schnoor, was out on the right by himself, one-on-one coverage, and it does look like Harrigan's going to come out in that same formation. So Schnoor by himself, he has Sainer covering him, and we have two wide receivers to the left, also another man in the wingback position, shotgun formation. Here's Capacious dropping back, looks to hit the slant, and it's going to be batted away! Batted away, great coverage there by Spencer Steiner. They went to look for the slant right away to Schnoor, and it's batted away. Echo takes over on downs with 2.53 left to go in our game, and they have a 6-0 lead. Yeah, that was, that was a great play by Steiner. Um... Just by running the slant, it kind of it was kind of an advantage. If they if they run a jump ball play, he's probably gonna you know gonna be able to uh, out jump Stainer. So first and ten for Edco. The ball's at the forty three, two fifty three left, and Garrigan does not have any timeouts. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle. Running hard is number thirty Keegan Hansel. He's able to get close to midfield for a pickup of about six on the play, and it's going to be second down and four for the Vikings, 235 and counting in our game. Yeah, probably need a, we need at least one first down. 
There's no way. Garrigan cannot stop the clock. I will be shocked if this does anything to stay on the ground. Again, they have Handful in the backfield. Stryker taking his time, waits for the official to hold up the five-second call for the uh, play clock. It is a handoff right up the middle to Handful. Gets just past the uh, 50-yard line. Picks up about a yard on the play. Two minutes to go in our ball game, and it's going to be third down and four for Edco from midfield. So for Edco here, of course, third and four. You can't get too too cute on this. Just keep it on the ground, run the clock, because even if you don't get that first down, that clock's going to be pretty much under a minute by the time Garrigan takes over if they don't pick up the first down here, as they again have Hansel in the backfield. Two up backs in front of him for this formation. Stryker is going to turn and hand it off to Hansel. He's around across midfield and gets back to line of scrimmage and drops. So a minute and 20 seconds. We'll see when they blow the whistle for the ball ready for play. So we'll see what we have here on fourth and three. They blow it with a minute 16 left to go on the clock. So Garrigan will get the ball back, but under a minute. I wouldn't be surprised if Edco stays in the huddle here and they're just going to let it run and then they'll call timeout to take off every second off of the 25-second the clock. That does appear what they're going to do. Ball is sitting just across midfield. As Edco has shown no signs of breaking their huddle or doing anything else. Watching yeah, the Spikers over there with Coach Rochford. And they will take a timeout as the clock works its way down. So we have 50.3 seconds left. Edco is up 6-0. to zero. And we're in for about as exciting of a finish as you could imagine here in this Class A quarterfinal. Yeah, this is this has just been a just a battle royale. If there's no other way to describe it, I mean, two uh, two defensive teams have just been just been uh, going head to head, and you know, to this point, Edco has hit the one big pass play, and that's the mm-hmm. that's the point that's on the board. So, you know, it comes down for Edco now. They've got a you know, they got a block like they've never blocked before. Mm-hmm. And I would be surprised if Stryker puts this ball in the middle of the field. I think he'll angle it to his sideline, um, not risk, you know, a run back and make them go however, you know, 80, 80 yards for the touchdown. And because uh, when Gergen gets the ball back, they're going to have to be, they're going to be one dimensional. I mean, they can't, they have no timeouts and, uh, well, and the other thing, too, the last time that Garrigan was back for a return, although this time they're only sending him back one guy, I was going to mention they ran that fake reverse the last time, but it looks like a Garrigan, they're going to send the guy back to return, but I believe they're going to be sending as many guys as they can here to try and get the block, and try to get the block. So here we go. Striker back, waiting for the snap, for the punt. Good snap right to him. He gets the kick away. It is a nice high kick that's going to be taken on the run at about the 22-yard line. He's going to be angled to the left and brought down just across the 25 to the 26-yard line. That's John Meist on the return. So, Kerrigan, first and 10. The ball sits on the 27-yard line. They have 41 and a half seconds to go down and score with Edco up 6-0. to zero. So, we'll see. Garrigan, of course, they're going to have to come out and throw here. you got to be looking to see where Schner is lined up every single time during this drive. Their big wide receiver out on the edge. That's been the number one target for them all year. He, coming into the night, had 22 catches. The next one was Ferguson with 13. After that, nobody had more than five. So, you need to know where 80 and 14 are first, and then you get the other ones covered second, and Neto is going to take a timeout. Yeah, I think they had personnel problems there. Hansel ran off, and I'm not sure he was supposed to. Um, like you said, they put Schneer out here wide to the right, trying to get him isolated, because i got to believe they're going to go with two or three just basically jump balls and see if they can put him close enough to him that uh, that uh, they can get uh, move the ball down the field. So, for Ed Joe, again, like I was mentioning, you first – have to see when they come out in these passing situations. Where's Schnur at? The, uh, I mean, it's not like you're going to lose him with the size that he is. <laughs> and then you also need to find where number 14, Tristan Ferguson, is. Had a quiet night so far, but he is capable of it and has a 17.3 yards per reception average on the year. 
comes in with 13 receptions tonight. After that, the next one has four receptions on the year, and then everybody else is less than that. But you got to make sure you keep everything in front of you. Garrigan can only stop the clock if they go out of bounds. 41.5 seconds left. Edco up 6-0. to zero. As the uh, timeout comes out broken, we're at the 26-yard line, and we have four wide receivers for Garrigan. And the snap is high. It's going to be hitting on the ground. It's picked up. It's going to hold the game. It's going to hold the game. That's so ball. The snap goes high. Unable to control it is capacious. And Edco is going to go to their first semifinal in school history. They have a date with another Class A team in the Dome next week. They'll take over first and ten. The ball is at the 15-yard line with 37 seconds to go, and Garrigan is not going to be able to stop the clock. Edco just gets with all the turnovers for the night, played great defensively, stepped up when their leading rusher went down in the first offensive play of the game. They're going to come out with the victory as they take the knee for striker. He'll have to take one more unless the officials wait to blow it ready. We'll have to see. Sometimes they will. Sometimes they won't. They are. They're going to wait. And they do. So that is going to do it. Edco comes all the way to Algona. The over three-hour trip. And their season continues. They knock off previously unbeaten Bishop Garrigan 6-0 to zero to move on to the semifinals next week in the Unidome. We'll take a look at our... Uh, totals and total it up and get our final comments and come back. You're listening to, uh, I, uh, excuse me, Edco Playoff Football from KMCH Sports. J&D Catering and Suites in New Vienna provides exceptional handcrafted food, whether a cocktail buffet, formal dinner, or a themed event. Let Diane and her staff create a customized menu sure to wow your guests. They offer an extensive specialty cupcake and cake menu. Call or check them out on Facebook. Let J&D Catering and Suites set your next special event above the rest. Fenton Repair is your dealer for the number one selling tractors in the world, Mahindra, backed by a seven-year, 3,000-hour powertrain warranty or their new retriever utility vehicles. Good luck from Mahindra Tractors and UTVs in Fenton Repair, LLC, located five miles north of Strawberry Point on Highway 13. Hi, this is Chris Henry, service manager of Brown Sales and Leasing in Elkader. Our goal is to make your car buying experience the best possible, and our factory certified technicians are dedicated to you and your vehicles. Stop in and see us at Brown Sales and Leasing in Elkader, or visit us online at 4browns.com. Your hometown dealer, wherever your hometown may be. Rustic, vintage, handcrafted items, antiques, home decor, and gifts, all this and more at Edgy Megs. Their Christmas open house is November 1st through the 4th. Check them out on Facebook at Edgy Megs. Edgy Megs is located on Laser Road on the south end of Edgewood. Megan would love to see you in her shop. Go Vikings! At Three Rivers, our customers come first. Your business is very important to us. Our goal is to provide you with the best products and service that you have come to expect from Three Rivers. Visit our website at threeriversfs.com or the location nearest you. Three Rivers, your partner in growth solutions. You expect big hits on the field, but not on the road. So when the unexpected happens, call Crager Body Shop in Dyersville. They specialize in major and minor collision repair and frame straightening. For all of your auto body work, see Crager Body Shop in Dyersville. Citizen State Bank, your locally owned, community-minded, and customer-oriented bank is here to serve you. Choose one of their seven convenient locations in Winthrop, Monticello, Manchester, Ryan, Strawberry Point, Hopkinton, and Nubiana. Citizen State Bank, community banking with people you know, member FDIC. For all of your animal feed and nutrition needs, turn to your local U.S. Feeds dealer, Edgewood Feed Mill. Good luck, Vikings, from your friends at Edgewood Feed Mill. Put a little south in your mouth at a rockin' 5K Barbecue Shack in Manchester. You can't go wrong with any of their melt-in-your-mouth menu options. Dine in or call ahead for carryout. Book them today to cater your next event. Rockin' 5K Barbecue Shack in Manchester. Edgewood Auto and Tire, Edgewood Saw and Supply, both in Edgewood, TNT Power Sports in El Cater, and Garnavillo Auto and Tire in Garnavillo, proud Edco Viking sponsors. Along with Ashley, our in studio producer, and the Edco AD, Roger Wright, Trevor Hunt with you in Algona as Edco. 
gets the quarterfinal win over Bishop Garrigan, 6-0, to zero, and a defensive struggle of a game. Both teams coming out and playing hard on defense, but Edco, it was just that one pass play to Stainer. That was the difference as they pick up the win. Edco is going to the semifinals for the first time in school history as they'll play next Friday at either 10 a.m. or 1 p.m., depending on what the state brings out as the state doing a little bit different this year. They have the four different, I guess you would call, regional brackets, if you want to call it that. And then once they get the four from there, they'll see who's left based out of the RPI and rank them and play them from that way. So no more is this the East versus the West when it comes to the Dome for the playoffs. And Edco going to be playing in their first semifinal next Friday at either 10 a.m. or 1 p.m. Yeah, I'm not real sure how they're going to sign the, the games. What I do know for sure is that Edco will not be the four seed because uh, whoever, I forget who West Hancock was playing, but uh, that game was, uh, um, both of those are below us in the RPI. You know, so we could be anywhere from the, from the actually it could be the one if there were two, uh, two upsets in other games, and then from the one to the three seed, um, Going into uh, going into the semis, what a great great play! You know, I think if you'd have told anybody that has watched Edco play that uh, Preston Rochford would have one rush for six yards on the first play of the game, get injured, basically not come back in the game. He played a couple of downs on defense before he left for good, and that uh, Edco would come in here and uh, score this victory. They probably think you were. Uh, you are a little crazy, but I'll tell you what, um, those boys in white over there, they are a unit, and it wasn't pretty, it wasn't pretty, but uh, they got the one big pass play, and they turned Garrigan over five times, and that was, you know, Parker Rochford made that play down here when Garrigan was driving and inside the 20, where he basically just took, he took the ball away from their fullback and started back the other way. Uh, there were other fumbles, you know, and then, then the one that ended the game on the shotgun snap. Um, you know, it was just um, just an amazing, amazing performance by Ed Coe. It really was, and it was one of those things where, you know, the old saying goes, defense wins championships. Ed Coe's defense has definitely been a strength this year. They uh, had the first game of the year against Bellevue. They gave up 40. Bellevue, a team playing in the 1A playoffs tonight. And then after that, just able to shut down teams along the way on defense, working hard. And tonight, another one of those examples. Garrigan, a team that comes in with great offensive rushing stats. They had multiple guys that could beat you with their feet and their legs. Multiple rushing touchdowns on the year. And Edco able to hold them. We'll get to the stats in just a couple of moments here. But able to turn them over, as you said, five times. And, again, Edco going to their first semifinal in school history. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can't say enough good things about uh, how, the, how the guys were prepared, how they played. Um, I thought coming in here, of course, I was assuming that Preston was going to be healthy. Mm-hmm. I thought we had, you know, I, I thought we had an advantage with the speed. Our guys are fast. Yes. You know, our skill position players are fast. And I think you saw it once. On uh, they they ran a sweep, and uh, Stainer, you know, the the tailback ran 40 yards to gain two because Stainer just strung him out and eventually just flat out caught him mm-hmm. and tackled him for a two yard gain when it looked like that, uh, you know, that sweep was going to get to the edge and it just it just didn't it couldn't you know um, and you know I, I think you know the the guys have been a little underestimated all year. Um, I know how quality our loss was. Bellevue's a great football team. They're not a good football team. They're a great football team. And if you can come into the state semis, lose your, or state quarters, lose your leading roster, and then throw up a goose egg on defense, scoring, well, I think the least we'd scored all year is 20. So we scored 14 points less than our least scoring match, scoring game all year. And to come, you know, three hours from home and do that, what, I mean, nothing, nothing but the best for those guys. So really quick. As we get ready to look at some of our totals here stat-wise, we will say some of the uh, other Class A games that went on tonight. Hudson beat Highland 41-14, so Hudson will be going on as they look to repeat as Class A champions. 
Let's see. You had another matchup between West Hancock and Akron Westfield. See what we can find there. West Hancock come out victorious, 50 to 14 over Akron Westfield. Yeah, and then, so that's they'll play because that'll be one, that'll be the one four game I think. Well, what's the Newman score? I'm and sorry. then yep, we'll see what we have here for Mason City Newman as we'll search through here. <laughs> Thank you to the people that update our score stream and uh, must be towards the top here. But uh, AHSCW is up on Mason City Newman thirty one to fourteen in the fourth quarter is what the report is there. So, of course, none of those exactly for sure official because the score stream app, one of those that fans can do on the time, sometimes get them in backwards. But just something to look forward to for the other Class A games that went on in the area as Edco gets ready to face one of those teams that come out victorious tonight next week in the Unidome. Yeah, I, um, by that, it should be, uh, you said Akron Westfield? Is is ahead of Newman? Is that who it yeah. is? Uh, no, uh, West Hancock beat Akron Westfield. The team oh, that's sorry. ahead of Mason City Newman is AHSTW. Okay, I, I I believe that. Just going off the top of my head, I believe that will be Ed Coe's opponent in the in the two three game based on the RPIs. You know, another thing that's stated if you're if you're uh, into the BC Moore ratings, um, the number one and number two teams. Uh, by the BC Moore ratings, we're, oh, okay. we're playing out here. Okay, actually, Edco is rated one, and, and Garrigan two in the BC Moore ratings. So, um, you know, it, it's what a battle. Um, you know, the guys are going to go home. They're going to be sore. They're going to be tired. Mm -hmm. um, but they're going to have a hard time sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's going to definitely be loud on that charter bus. Whether you're on the player one, whether you're on the fan one, everybody going to be celebrating during that long trip back to Edgewood and Colesburg. So let's take a look at some of our stats here that we have, and then we'll get ready to wrap it up, see what we have. Well, for, for Bish and Garrigan, you know, we talked about the defense. In the, in the, in the second half, uh, Ed Cole only allowed 38 yards rushing. Um, their leading rusher was their fullback, uh, Eric Toll, and he ended up with 73 yards. Um, i got to be honest, I was so excited at the end, I didn't total up the, <laughs> the passing yards. Um, but uh, it looks like 20, 20 and 12, 32. Looks like they only had 32 yards in passing. So uh, I unofficially have Bishop Gergen for 60 yards total offense in the second half. Um, Edco didn't have that much. They had, uh, let's see here, 54, 65 yards passing and probably about 23, 20 yards rushing is all in the second half. So they didn't have very many either. But like they said, they made, that, they made the one big play. And the thing was, on the exchange of punts, the first exchange of punts, the field flipped. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a first down or two to start the half, punted it, held Garrigan. They punted it back, and, and we only had to go like about 50 yards, if I remember right, right yep. for that score total. And 37 of that was on the one pass play. So I think that's the, you know, that that's the the – wrap up on that there. I apologize to our listeners about not having stats. They're very accurate, but <laughs> sure at the end, I wasn't paying too much attention to my stat sheet. <laughs> yeah, the AD of the school that comes out victorious in a close game, I can't really say that I blame you being an AD myself <laughs> at another school. So again, we want to thank our uh, sponsors, all the sports boosters for bringing you postseason sports here on KNCH and KNCH.com, especially those ones that for the EDCO sponsors, we have CNL Drainage, Community Insurance, Community Savings Bank, Del Clay Farm Equipment, Deers Realty, Edgy Megs, Edgewood Auto and Tire, Edgewood Sun Supply, TNT Power Sports, and Garnavillo Auto and Tire, Edgewood Convalescent Home, Edgewood Feed Mill, Edgewood Locker and Event Center, Edgewood Pump Service, Fenton Repair, Hair Works Family Hair Works, Everett's Auto Parts, and Mama Jen Nails, and Ray's Excavating. So, Again, Edco comes out victorious in this Class A quarterfinal. They get the 6-0 win over Bishop Garrigan. They'll move on to play in the Unidome next week, either 10 a.m. or 1 p.m. inside the Unidome for their first semifinal appearance in school history. It's been fun. It was uh, Glad you asked me along here. <laughs> it was definitely an exciting game. And came right down to the wire. A lot of energy. Great game played by both teams. And 
Ed Till on to the next one. Time to heal up and get ready to go for whoever the state pairs them with for the uh, semifinal round. For Ashley back at the station, for my broadcast partner, Roger Wright, want to thank all of you for listening tonight. Again, Edco comes out victorious 6-0 to zero in this quarterfinal matchup. They'll be in action next Friday inside the Unidome at either 9 a.m. or 1 p.m. And you can be sure to catch that game on KMCH and KMCH.com. Thank you for listening. Edco with the 6-0 win. Moving on to the semifinals, you've been listening to Edco Playoff Football from KMCH Sports. There, Delilah, what's it like in New York City? I'm a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so